Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, years after zero. This show shall begin right now. Shout out to you listening on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, or watching along at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. We can't thank you enough, and I just want to make one formal announcement. I'm fucking back, dude. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go, bro! Last night was awesome, obviously. Last night was a very cool evening for me. I got a chance to chit-chat with an old friend and a new friend on ESPN2 and tell some stories that are tried and true. I was basically like a pastor or a priest going to the Bible. And I'm saying that just because one particular reason. I've told a lot of stories throughout my life. There are a couple that have seemed to hit at all times. The Bible seems to be the stories that hit all the time. Mm -hmm. And the priest and the preacher's job is to tell the story in a different fashion. I haven't told some of the stories I got to tell last night in years. Did not know I was going to be telling them either. So immediately upon the question being asked, I'm like, oh my God, it's great to revisit this Thanksgiving (laughs) dinner. It's great to revisit this <laughs> casino night. It was just, I had so much fun. I was so thankful for the opportunity. Obviously, Peyton and Omaha Productions had me over there. Eli is a legend. Great chatting with him on this show yesterday. And I hope, you know, we had some, I have some behind the scenes shots. You know, my wife uh, of me setting up and my thoughts going into it. I don't think there has been a time where a guest has come on that show where it has necessarily upped the quality of the show. There has been great clips that have come out from people, great quotes coming out of people, but the way that thing is set up with, you know, three different locations, basically, it's uh, on a FaceTime like the show, and you could, if you didn't know Peyton, like, personally, or Eli personally, I think you could be a little bit gun shy, maybe, and if you're gun shy, with a little bit of a lag in the tech thing, people are going to step on each other. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I literally went in there with the mindset, hey, I'm coming in, guns a-blazing, yeah. all right? I have the ability to be comfortable because I know this, both of these people rather well. I have some stories, but also I've been watching the last seven guests, and it's like, if you wait at all, it's over. We had a couple moments where we stepped on each other. I tried to get out of there. It was good times. I think overall, though, aside from the little tech things that people can maybe pick apart about this situation, it's an internet show happening on ESPN2 with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. There, so there's going to be some tech stuff. I love that show. Yeah. It's awesome. Incredible. I fucking love it. I enjoyed the first three quarters when I was watching, uh, just kind of seeing what was going to go on. I was going to do some callbacks to some things that he said earlier. The amount of football information that just spills out of their mouths mm-hmm. in the middle of a game is insane. I mean, we all knew very early that the Detroit Lions were running cover two, and the reason reason why they were running the ball is because the Detroit Lions were literally testing Aaron Rodgers on whether or not he would throw the ball or just continue to run it. We heard that the entire game from Peyton and Eli. Then they, they switched back to an interview with Aaron Rodgers on the field, and they go, hey, what happened? I know. Well, they're running kind of a cover two that entire time, so we had to be very patient with it. It was like, I feel like I got the entire game plan almost while watching it alongside Peyton and Eli, and if you're a football nerd, I think that show's only going to get better and better, and i uh, so grateful to be watching it. And also, Incredible and to be a part of it, but also incredibly grateful that I'm fucking back. All yeah. Right. All right. Packers minus 11 and a half. The yes. hottest people, the hottest prognosticators that I have in my life. Mitt went five and one this past weekend on Hammered Down. He said Lions plus 11 and a half. Jeez. Uh, AJ Hawk went 10 and three on the entire weekend against the spread. He goes, Packers will win. Lions plus 11 and a half. What? Everybody was basically saying that the Packers minus 11 and a half was a classic Mush McAfee situation. I was putting it out there and everybody else was going to win. We covered, okay? Mm-hmm. It was close. I mean, Jared Goff threw that ball at the end. <sighs> I was sweating yeah. rather handsomely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was coming down there. The over hits, a lot of points were scored. It was a glorious evening for me, and I can't wait to talk to Aaron Rodgers about it here in about an hour and 54 minutes or so. He has to be feeling pretty damn good. There was a lot of people attacking him all week. Oh, he's too nonchalant. He doesn't care. Why is he doing this? Why is he doing a show and so comfortable and relaxed? They just got shellacked by the New Orleans Saints in Jacksonville. And I think all he was doing is exactly what he does every week. By the way, 
right. Look for the same exact human probably today on the show yeah. and look for a guy who will probably understand that this was going to happen. He knew this was probably going to happen and I can't wait to chit chat with him. He did give a little, uh, most of the things that are said in here is bullshit though to, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to the media. I think that's, that's a fascinating relationship I'm excited to watch grow. You know, through the season, yeah. <laughs> the media people who are obviously potentially on the Green Bay Packers organization side, and they have to be, by the way, because if Aaron was to leave, guess who's going to stay there? The Packers will still be there, yeah. and that media person will still be there. So they have to be on the Packers side. This is almost like Tom E. Curran uh, up there in New England. Yep. Whenever Tom left and the Patriots were still there, Tom E. Curran was kind of, you know, kind of side He was like, Tom Brady has some points here, and the Patriots did not not hear that. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is uh, this is a situation that's going to uh, continue to play out here. I assume Aaron and the Green Bay Packers are going to be able to get in good graces. It, it, there should be more communication. I think that is already happening in this entire thing, but that. That, that is a story to watch along as we go because it feels like Aaron is at a point where he will just tell the truth. Like, well, I mean, a lot of you guys are cooking up a bunch of bullshit narratives in here. So yeah. it's all a bunch of garbage is what he said. To some, there's obviously incredible media. I'm just saying in some situations, it felt like that was how Aaron was. Aaron was being portrayed as a guy that didn't care about his team. He was jumping in waterfalls. He wasn't at OTAs. They lose 38-3. He's somehow not crying about it two days later. <laughs> He's not upset about it, sweating about it, uh, throwing a temper tantrum about it two days later this guy doesn't even care and then they just go beat the doors off of the Detroit Lions I think he had like two incompletions at one point with three touchdowns I, I mean it was it was absurd there now very patient Obviously, Aaron Jones dominated. Mm -hmm. They found his chain, by the way, that had his dad's ashes in it. That's great news. At about 2 a.m., I think an athletic trainer went back out on the Lambeau and found it. Incredible story there. Aaron Jones, incredible ball player. The ball to Devontae Adams. Oh, and the ball to Big Bob Tunyon. Oh. And then listening to Peyton and Eli break down, like, why are the Lions doing this on third and 12? You've literally been doing something different. Why on the most important play are you going to man coverage and then Devontae up and out? Mm -hmm right in the bucket how you doing i mean it was it was a beautiful game it was a great thing and uh you know it feels like big mo is running back through my body right yeah now. yeah and big mo i'm talking about big momentum hey, yeah, yeah, i'm right. gonna carry that into thursday then then it's saturday right. then sunday right. and then monday and right. I, I ain't looking back i'm doing this thing the rest of the season i believe i'm feeling maybe too good about myself with still a losing record on the season but <laughs> Last night was a big night. Uh, the boys at Talks the Table here at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt. At Ty Schmidt is an owner of the Green Bay Packers organization. To watch that team do what they did to the Detroit Lions last night, how'd that make you feel? It feels like the conversations of this team dying should at least subside for another couple of weeks, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that was to be expected. We said yesterday, hey, this is a get-right game. I think a lot of people would have been very, very worried if the, it, this one would have come down to the, the very end, but... It's not overreaction Monday, so I'm not going to overreact. I mean, we knew the defense. I mean, we knew the offense was going to be just fine when they kind of started getting their groove. Like this defense stinks. And granted, they got, you know, Zadarius Smith, arguably the best player out, out there, is hurt right now. But like, they didn't get any pressure on golf all night, really. I mean, the you know, and people were saying, oh, in the second half they looked better. I mean. Jared Goff, once the weather got bad or, like, the ball got a little bit wet, he just, like, couldn't hold on to it, fumbled a couple times. I mean, they got a couple pressures, but Kevin King, same thing as last year. It was just – it's tough to look at that and be excited. It feels just like the Packers teams of the past where it's like – they're going to have to score 42 to 45 points a game to win. Otherwise, you just can't rely on that defense to get stops. It did feel like uh, Peyton and Eli were maybe waiting for the Green Bay Packers defense coordinator to make a terrible call. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did happen. Yeah. Now, oh, now yeah. Peyton is obviously going to be very pro quarterback forever. He's He actually said that last mm -hmm. night. Like, hey, I'm going to be pro quarterback. He is playing quarterback for both teams on these Monday night games. So much so that I actually asked him, like, are you regretting now that you have to watch – because his preparation is only one way, I think. Like, I think he only knows how to watch film one way, and that's, like, so much. He's preparing to be quarterback, I think, for both of these teams, and he'll find a nice groove in there. But I think what he realized with that Packers defense last week, you know, he mentioned a couple times that Aaron and the offense were only on the field 12 times in the first half. They only had 12 plays, and defense couldn't get off the field. And obviously, Aaron wasn't making anything happen whenever he was on there either. But he, to play complimentary football, you need defense to get the other team off the field. And uh, the offense, you need a couple first downs here, so 
everybody can get a good break. You know, it's like one of those situations. They called some man coverage scheme at some time, and Peyton was just sitting there like, yeah, this is not what I would call. And Cole Kublik uh, tweeted this out. I believe Diggs did as well and a couple others. Listening to them talk, it's almost like they should be defensive coordinators. And this is kind of the Brandon Staley story mm -hmm. over there at the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, former defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams, former quarterback for the University of Dayton. And they always say, well, well, he's a quarterback, but he also knows the defense. That's right. That's right. And it's like listening to Peyton and Eli talk about the defenses, it's almost like Peyton was like, this is not what I want to see in this situation. Mm -hmm. This is not what I want to see in this situation. Why are they not doing this, basically? It's almost like, how come quarterbacks, they always go to offensive coordinator? Maybe they should just think about a couple of these super football IQ folks and just put them uh, super high football IQ quarterbacks. Be like, let's put you on defensive side of the ball, see how this thing goes. Let them eat. You might not be able to relate to them as quickly, uh, as quickly and you might not know all their terminology. You'll get it. You'll figure it out. And then just call what you wouldn't want to see. That was a fascinating take and, and kind of what I, I think we all kind of synced from the Peyton and Eli cast last night, but they were sitting on a Green Bay Packers defense waiting to have it. They couldn't get a stop. No. I mean, Aaron was, was rolling, 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 rolling. Touchdown. Then Jared Goff would have a seven-minute drive or something like yeah. that. They'd score, and then it would go back. 17-14, they're down. You know what I mean? And, Pey and Aaron hadn't had a single... I think at that point, failed drive at all. And people on the internet were dancing like, oh, oh, yeah. oh the Packers are dead. Aaron stinks. It's like, I don't think he's had an incompletion yet. Like, has this guy even, I think he had maybe two incompletions in the entire time. That defense is going to have to tighten up. I don't know if Joe Barry is going to be a guy who's going to be taking a lot of arrows this year, mm -hmm. but I do know that Petten did last year, and I'm not sure if Joe Barry is doing much better than him right now. Well, and then I saw a quote that, you know, like LaFleur, I think, at halftime went up to Joe Barry and said, either get pressure on Goff or, you know, play better coverage, and that really lit a fire under his ass. Like, you hear stuff like that. That lit like, up coaches? Yeah, I oh, guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't remember who tweeted it, but I just saw it. It's yeah. like, well, it's, oh, I'm a fucking coach my ass off. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, and, 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 second half. And that kind of stuff used to happen with Penton too like you know they, they'd come out in the first half and just look fucking terrible and then LaFleur lets fire under his ass and all Penton looked good in the second half and then it's just I mean it's Groundhog's Day it's just the same thing over and over so hey, we'll they, see they did, go, they did they look did, good they did I mean and part of that you know was Jared Goff fumbling a, a snap yeah. and you know like throwing a bad pick and uh -huh. yeah you know just slipping out slipping out of his hand I mean guys never practiced with a wet football before it looked like but it just like it, it Outside of that stuff, I mean, you're not going to have guys shooting themselves in the foot week after week after week after week. So we'll see. They got to get much better. Ball mm -hmm. slipped out of Zito's hand this morning as well. Whoa, really? That, that, that wasn't oh, yeah. a Duke, though. It was act that's what I'm saying. Like it was a smaller, more rubbery, actually more grippy ball. Well, it's because he had oh, bacon boy. grease all over his hands, too. It was actually Whopper <laughs> It was Whopper mayo. Anyways, I don't know if Stan Goff. Sauce. Did Goff? I don't, I don't know Goff had. I don't. I don't know if Goff had bacon, <laughs> grease, what? or Whopper mayo on his hands. <laughs> But that ball did come right out. I'm sorry, oh, Nick. Yeah. What were you going to say? Did he pat it out of his own hand? It looked like you know a QB sits and pats the ball. So it looked like he hit it and then it. I think I think he was. I think maybe his natural move is to hit it before he's going to throw it. And maybe it, I think it was the suddenness of the move where you like kind of the pullback. Yeah, and then you also squeeze. You know, like mm -hmm. I think Kyler does this sometimes. When Kyler is trying to throw it harder, I think he grips it a little bit more and makes it come out as a duck. Like, I think anybody that's ever thrown a football knows that, like, the tighter the grip doesn't necessarily mean the better. Like, no. that thing's – so, and sometimes when you try to tighten a little bit, you can slip off there. But I'm not 100% sure. If he did just bat that ball out of his own hands, I mean, that's a good strip sack. Yeah. That's yeah, a good yeah. strip sack. Get yeah. him into Robert Mass's gridiron gang, dude. Get that whole thing happen. I love to see it. They were very close to covering, though. Oh, yeah. Too oh, close. Yeah. I mean, they were very – DeAndre Swift started getting loose in there. And, uh, you know, he – Oh, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Can tell kids anything is possible now. Uh, those who got it got it. The um, <laughs> yeah. he started moving, and then Goff did the throw and everything like that. That was a real sweater for me uh, at Boston Connor. What did you bet on last night, if I do recall? Aaron Jones two scores. I mean, in the first half. Going forward, now I know you got to sprinkle a little on three plus touchdowns for Aaron Jones because that was like plus twenty four hundred. What was the two plus touchdowns for Aaron Jones? Uh, plus plus four eighty. Yeah, 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 plus yeah. four eighty. That's good payday. Oh yeah, juicy. Hey, hey, we we really hit that thing. That's a couple units too. Uh huh. Didn't it? A couple units. Uh, that, that, that counts be, as four or five wins if least, you think about yeah, it. Yeah, if you start doing the math, that's at least got to <laughs> yeah. be it. That was a good office run there. You know, did not score, Jam Jamal. Uh -huh. 
Ninja Jamal, Jamal man. Man. What's that all about? MCDC didn't want to get him in the zone in uh, Green Bay in his return there. I saw Aaron start targeting Randall Cobb pretty heavily in that one, and then they actually Ugh. pointed at each other. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right. Did that thing. He got yeah. hit. He got oh, hit. Oh, yeah. That was a tough hit. I don't know how that's going to go. Hopefully, he's back there. But Jamal Williams, no tutties. What's going on with MCDC? He doesn't care about his players? Hmm. I don't know. Because he could have ran that Aaron Jones play. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Goff just doing the thing. Well, and can Goff run that play? I don't know. But Goff's they, great at that play. McVay used to run that play all oh, the yeah. time. The little touch pass thing. Yeah. McVay off. Oh, you're talking about the little. Oh, I thought you were talking about the rollout. No, okay. no, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. the little touch to Aaron Jones. Yeah, run. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could have Jamal Williams do that at some oh, point yeah. whenever the Green Bay Packers defense wasn't stopping anybody early. Yeah. I mean, get Jamal a little payback, you know? A little bit of Jamal on Damn. that. Back in your life, Green Bay Packers. What's that all about? Is MCDC not about the players? Wow. Uh, that's oh, wild. I don't think we can blame this on MCDC. They just needed a touchdown in any way they could get it. And Cephas was on fire early, so you got one to him. Hawkinson's always in the end zone. Got one to him. But Hawkinson's I mean, very good. Yeah, he's a great awesome. catch. He is very good. And, you know, on that fourth down, that was really the game when they didn't get that fourth down. Hawk was wide open, but we just couldn't get it to him. Well, I mean, you ever once in a while, it's a lot easier to see who's open on yeah. Sky Game. Yeah. That's right. That's why Mike Glennon's been in the NFL 14 True. years. <laughs> you, guys, you guys talked about that golf fumble, and, you know, you thought it slipped out of his hand. But I, as a Lions fan, actually saw the Calvin Johnson curse. Come from the sky, uh, bat that ball yeah. out so the uh -huh. Packers could have it. Yeah, the Calvin Johnson curse is a real thing, and it, it is not being addressed properly. It's no. not going anywhere. I've too. seen that game from the Lions one million times. <laughs> they do that every single time. I said it to Ty. I said, hey, we're going to keep this close in the beginning. Everyone's going to lose their minds, and then Aaron will come out at halftime and score right out of halftime like he always does. We'll make a mistake, score again, get Hey, you guys won and elected to receive, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So you actually asked for Aaron to get it in the second half, he which I can respect scores. because if Aaron comes out, by the way, if that offense comes out that first drive and does exactly what they did, yep. that place is probably going to be, I mean, not that it wasn't crazy, Lambeau packed again, by the way. Let's yeah. Go. yeah. Let's go. Good. Good for you guys out there. Cheeseheads looks absolutely awesome. But he comes out there, he's going to do what he's got to do. So MCDC had to make a decision there yeah. like, okay, do we want – Get a big stop, man. <laughs> or do we take our offense out there and try to score? And they did well, by the oh, way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They looked good. But Aaron did come out, and, I mean, it was just. It was over. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, it was all she wrote. Yeah. I mean, you had Aaron Jones scoring four touchdowns. <laughs> Give me a break. Big Bob Tanyan getting a laser beam to his yeah. arms in the end zone. I mean, Devontae Adams didn't get in the zone. They were looking for him a couple times, but he's still an absolute. I mean, it feels like the conversations of Aaron Rodgers thinking of football are over. But, by the way. I think the Lions played a lot better than I thought they were going to. Yeah, not bad fight, team. A lot fight. of heart, man. A lot of heart, man. Our team fight, man. I mean, we could have got beat by 50, man. We you got beat it. by, what, 17, 18? That's 18, pretty good, man. man. Yeah, you could have. I mean, Aaron, he only got the ball five, six times. He scored every time, but, He's man. so fucking uh, good, man. be great to have that guy. <laughs> He's the best. What did MCDC say after the game? Anything? That. That, yeah. yeah. For yeah. guys, that was all so quote. fucking hard, man. <laughs> At Tone Diggs. Uh, was a lot of money made last night or lost by the sports books? I, I it felt like all the people that were like uh, maybe sharks do 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 maybe sharks do 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 maybe sharks do 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 there may be sharks. Feels like they were all in on sharps. By the way, Zito is what we're going with. Sharks is the original song, unless you're talking about uh, Jamie Tart. Jamie Tart, welcome back, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Real research. It is good to have him all Thank in. You, you know what I mean? Love that guy. Love that guy. Uh, it felt like the Sharps are all like the 11 and a half on the Lions. Yes. I, am I wrong in thinking yeah, that? Did. It felt like that was where a lot of the money well, was actually, going. Well, actually, the public was on them, too. It was on the Lions as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So, oh. me and the sports books had a great night last night. Yes. That's awesome. What did you go on? Uh, Devontae Adams over yards. How many did he get? A hundred and something. Did he? Twenty something. Yeah. yeah. Did he did not get it? He did get it. Oh no, yeah. The over it was eighty something, so Yeah. I mean Devontae Adams and Aaron are always gonna be good together. Yes. Yeah. I mean anytime you got two people sharing Instagram uh things like, Hey, it's our last dance That's and then, right. did you see the flyover video? It was amazing. Yeah. So Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are standing next to each other. Flyover comes. It that might have been the biggest fighter jet I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> really? It was the it seemed to be about 53 and a third wide. Wow. Ooh, a little bomber. I mean, it, bomber. it looked like, uh, maybe not 53, but because 53 and a third is how wide the field is. And as it flew over, it looked like it was the entire size of like the Jumbotron on the top. Damn. And it was one plane and it was 
moving. And uh, as it's obviously as the national anthem's ending, and the shot is just on Aaron and Devontae next to each other, and you see Aaron look up, and then the shot goes up to the thing, and then he, he comes back to Aaron, and Aaron and Devontae are like, hey, that was crazy. And then they <laughs> dap each other up and go, and it's like, these two really like each other. Oh, yeah. These two really like playing football with each other. Like, that is something that Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton always said, like, hey, I like playing football with you. Like, it is a lot of fun. And if you go back to, like, when you were a kid and you actually played pickup football and stuff like that, when you played with a guy that was so good or so much if you were a quarterback or the wide receiver it was so much fun i'd never really think about that until i heard andrew and ty like say they enjoyed playing football with each other that's really what it is you know it's just at the top level aaron and Devonte seem to be just like gronk and tom yeah mm -hmm. same exact way mm -hmm. and i guess they're gonna catch peyton we heard from gronk and gronk by the way does not watch film i just yeah. run by guys yes. yeah which is <laughs> Insane to think that he lasted that long in New England with Bill just saying, yeah, you know what, fuck it. Just let him run by, guys. He doesn't have to watch film. Go take a nap in the back, Rob. You'll I, be okay. I fucking love it. I mean, yeah. this is nothing that you would normally hear from somebody, especially an NFL top 100 player of all time. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I don't really want... And Peyton's head had to explode, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I oh, would yeah. assume that his, his, his head... He looked mad. Well, he did talk about... The Gronk, though, did talk about the play, the trap play, where it's a play action guard pull and then tight end release, and then it's you're basically just a gimme over top of the line linebackers who had to bite because the the offensive lineman pulled and we heard that story uh both in the nfl top 100 and the the whole thing that has happened and that's where dallas clark scored a lot mm -hmm. and then tom took that up and basically that is where gronk has scored mm -hmm. 90 touchdowns i think is what gronk said last night but thinking about gronk not watching film and just going up to tom and being like hey is there anything i need to know this week or whatever and uh tom being like okay so the cards cover two you're probably gonna do this you know Sounds easy. Cool. Gronk, Gronk win then. Right? <laughs> and then just go and do his thing and dominate. That's amazing. And that makes sense on why when they traded him to the Detroit Lions, aside from the fact that it's the Detroit Lions right. yeah. and it's potentially Calvin Johnson curse, he's probably also like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a guy that tells me no. mm -hmm. four sentences, gives me everything I need yeah. to know. Yeah. He's great all the time. And all we do is win. I will retire right now. It makes a lot more sense why he will only. Tom Brady's my quarterback. He has said like numerous times. And it makes sense if that has worked so well, so much so that you become like greatest tight end of all time. And literally the only film you have is via another person telling you what to do. Like, hey, I only need to do a couple things. There's film surfacing on the internet now of obviously Tom telling Gronk to do different things yeah. during a play. One of the ones that was most obvious, he literally goes, Gronk, stand up. <laughs> and then Gronk stands up. And then I think they throw a touchdown to him or something. Like, it is just, that's amazing. Shout out to Gronk for being able to do that. And I don't ever want to compare myself to Gronk or Tom Brady ever, but that's exactly how it goes with SmackDown with mm -hmm. Michael Cole. Mm -hmm. And it is yeah. a dream. Like, hey, so Michael Cole is my play-by-play -play guy. I just want to let everybody know Michael Cole is my play-by-play -play guy. Uh, play -by -play guy. Just like Rob Gronkowski said, Tom Brady's my quarterback. And I think it's because of similar reasons. Now, I don't know if we'll ever have the success that they have obviously had. They're going to be the all-time leading connection in touchdowns. But it is really nice when you can just go to somebody who is the greatest of all time and just be like, hey, do I need to know anything tonight? Uh... Da 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 and da da da. All right, perfect. Sounds good. All right, I'm just gonna go out there and have a good time. It is amazing. So uh, I can trust and appreciate mm -hmm. the fact that Gronk is doing that at the fucking NFL level, at the highest level. Like, do I need to know anything? I covered two, but the one guy's a little bit weak, so you'd be able to do that. Oh, okay, thanks, man. All right, I'm out of here. And then they just scored touchdowns. Yeah, five of them so far, or whatever. No, is it four or four? Four. Five? four. Four of them. So had two back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah. yeah, four. I think he had another one, though, that maybe was supposed to be five, because I remember screaming to myself, does Gronk have five fucking touchdowns? Maybe a drop <laughs> one or something like that. Remember, there was people that thought he was... What did you, you guys trade him? Fourth round? Uh, third rounder, Third I round, yeah, which is still again, pretty high, by the way. Oh, third rounder is still very yeah, high. And he would only go to one place, so there wasn't. it wasn't as if we, there were any options for his highest bidder situation. Yeah, and it wasn't like uh, other teams even had the thought no. of, would you take Gronk? Because everybody would be like, uh, yeah. yes, yeah, we'll take First him. round pick. <laughs> yeah, we'll actually have a guy watch film for him. If that's yeah. what, is that what this is going to take or whatever? Let's do it. I enjoyed that a lot, man. I, I just enjoyed last night a lot. I enjoy that Aaron and Devontae are always going to be a fucking tag mm -hmm. team, it feels like. Yeah. And I would assume that whatever team, if there is another team, or if it's the Packers, if you get Aaron Rodgers' situation figured out, I assume Devontae Adams is going to be close B. Hi. Yeah, Ooh. I think so too. Uh, let's get to a break here, and then on the other side, we'll have Aaron Andrews join us. Nice. Okay. EA. Yeah. Here we go. EA will be joining us. Fox. Uh, reporter uh, we've seen her on television for like the last 
She was doing Thursday night football games. I just thought of this. Thursday night football games when our West Virginia team was on Thursday night every single night. Aaron Andrews was like in Morgantown like three weeks out of six weeks or whatever. She probably had to hate that or whatever. But she <laughs> has been crushing it a long time. Can't wait to chat with her on the other side about Thursday night football. Hell yeah. Panthers going to beat the hell out of the Texans. Yeah, that's right. We are a Texan show. Oh, yeah. But our guy, I think, popped his hammy out completely. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor. Taylor. Come on, good. Godspeed. T's and P's to the hammy and to Tyrod Taylor. We appreciate the hell out of you. And don't think just because you tore that hamstring that I won't. Need five push-ups yes. from you. Yep, that's right. I do. Maybe need ten out of you. Mm -hmm. Love Tyrod, but also love the Panthers, especially on a Thursday night with who? David? Sills. Davis Mills. Davis Mills. Davis Mills. <laughs> David Sills is the wide receiver. There it is. Hey, he's a player. That kid's out of West Virginia. Great. He can play. <laughs> Just like Arch Manning. All right, we're back in four <laughs> minutes uh, with Aaron Andrews. Can't thank you enough. One eight three three four McAfee. Can't wait to hit the phones and chit chat with everybody on the Five Energy phone line. It should be a good day on Rogers Tuesday. Hell I yeah. can't wait for the two o'clock hour. I can't wait for Aaron on the other side. We'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tyler. Yeah! Oh, man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man, I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool-Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in elite, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without you know doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected. You know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me. You know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding and working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. And, and I want to—I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys, man. Just that just refuses to adapt. Although I am one of those old crusty guys now. Yeah, you are <laughs> old as shit now. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been around a long time. I remember back in the day, whenever you showed up, there was a lot more, you know, to the camera. There was a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was a lot of that. Now you're just old ass man now, huh? You know how it is. Years in this business will scar you, man. It'll settle you down. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh, with you is. Uh, when you would tell me every um, warm-up, uh, I'm going to get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what, what does yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth like I, uh, whenever you said that to me? No, man. It was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And, <laughs> and, and you were one of them. So I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit. <laughs> You came back into my wheelhouse. Yenzers are going to go bananas in Heinz Field this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to. Oh, mama, I'm in the of my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> clock. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why, well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man, but on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless gray faces that we... Die! Die, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Never had a losing season. Absolute legend. Two-time Super Bowl champion. Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, Coach. Yeah! I assume Raj had to walk in there and do a full, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, curtsy. Hey, I'm, we're coming. We're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here. Is that okay? Yep, deal. Perfect. Let's get some tea. Let's get the fuck out of here. How do you think that went between Raj and the Queen? You think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so 
What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? Was that a spot on accent? Is that one out of the park? What if she's really dialed in to the NFL? This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to the show here. 32 minutes into hour one on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, yeah. September 21st, 2021. Not just one Aaron today. No, uh-uh, really? no. Two legendary Aarons joining us on one beautiful Tuesday. Wow. You, could you fathom that? Let's go. Uh, joining us now he is a former third place placer. <laughs> Okay. On Dancing with the Stars. Wow. Whoa. Moves. You know, you got to do the tango. Oh, you got to do course. the whole thing. You know what I mean? You got to do the Foxtrot. You got to do a Foxtrot. Yeah, you got to do it all. Mm-hmm. Former third place placer in da- on Dancing with the Stars and NFL legend on Fox with Joe and Troy. Ladies and gentlemen, EA, Aaron Andrews. Yeah! yeah! Woo! First time caller. Long time listener, very annoyed it's taken this long. I'm just happy to be here on Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Andrews Tuesday. You know what I mean? Who's this sponsor by? Well, Do we know? Well, <laughs> we we have a sponsor. We had a sponsor. We lost the sponsor. They, oh, they no. didn't necessarily love our ad read. And I would like to let you know, we're annoyed that you haven't come on in a long time either. What the hell happened? Yeah. We've been sending in requests for a long oh, time. Oh, we've been sending in requests for a long time. Not Not available. EA. Please. Please. Everybody said. That's what we've been saying no. this whole time. Yeah. No. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Haven't heard. I'd be bringing my cigars. I'd be having oh. my fake background, like AJ, all the things. I watch all these shows. Uh, well, we appreciate that. And you should have been on a long time ago because you've been doing yeah. great things for the sport of football for so long. We're thankful you're here. Uh, let's dive into <laughs> I, it. I do nothing. You do? No, you've been. <laughs> hey, you. Were, I don't. Stop it. Hey, you were at West Virginia whenever I was there, like, I, that was like every week almost. It felt like we had a Thursday oh, yeah. night football game. And then watching you just catapult through the football, everybody loved I think you're crushing it, EA. What are you saying? You do nothing. You've been around the game longer than all of us have been. Yeah. I mean, what are we Come even on. doing? I will tell you, Pat, there's nothing like that intro before your commercial break. I mean, this broad, she's been around for years. Thank you. Thank you. And this segment sponsored by Great Moisturizer and Botox, you know? That is not. You obviously look. Do you say that to Aaron when he comes on? Do you say that to Tom Brady? You guys have been here forever. I mean, when are we getting some new blood? Yeah, we do, actually. I mean, that is something we would say to them. But it's you look like the first time I saw you in Morgantown on Thursday night football, EA. Uh, oh, what a gal she was. She was going to Cracker Barrel um, and not working out. Herb Street would order pancakes for the table, and I'd just be chowing it. Like, I just thought, you know, you could keep that 18-year-old body forever. And then it was like, I got to start lifting like A.J. Hawk, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> listen, you're crushing it. You always have. You always will. I like the fact that you like pancakes. I love pancakes. Oh, I, love oh, I oh, eat yeah. everything, yeah. Yeah, well. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, listen, look what we're learning here. Look what we're learning here as we go. This is becoming a great... Uh, all right, so let's dive into some football, though, shall we? Let's do it. Is and there... by the way, I'm doing Thursday this week, and we have a, we have a good little uh, matchup on Sunday as well. We have that Rams-Bucks game, too. Oh. Okay, so let's talk Double about... Double duty. Okay, so let's talk about Thursday first. Let's do the Carolina okay. Panthers-Houston Texans game. Tyrod Taylor's out. He continues to yep. be the most unlucky, great quarterback I, I think we've ever seen. Every situation has happened. Uh, when you talk to these teams, do they give you a lot more than they give everybody else because they like know you and they, it's a <laughs> national championship? Or are you expecting to hear nothing from all these people? What is, what is it like? It has nothing to do with me. I'm also on these calls with Troy and Joe, who everybody loves. Half the time, Joe's like teeing off somewhere. He's like, hold on, guys, let me finish this. But um, <laughs> everybody loves it. And uh, no, they're they're always so wonderful to us. It's kind of a bummer because we don't really see, obviously, the Texans or the Panthers very much. Um, we just get them on Thursday night. But yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Coach Rule. And uh I actually had texted Herbie last year because I was like, I've been away from college for a while. What's he like? Are we into it? But everybody's really good with us. I mean, you know, you're a former player, athlete. 
D1. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know what it's like when yeah. the, when Troy and Joe come to town, you just want to lay it all out there, right? I mean, you guys never talked to me. You know, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, didn't I even, did on the sidelines. Honestly, I love by special the teams. That. They're my people on the, on the field. I always talk to them. Very nice. Because they're always you. like, hey, can you move your ass over? I'm trying to practice or I'm trying to warm up here. And I'm like, in the way. My light guy's in the way. My, my monitor guy's like, shit, let's move. Come the, on, move. Yeah, it's not you. It's not you. It's everybody. It's the, the lighting person, the camera person. Yeah. Then there's a PA, I believe, that's yeah, going oh, yeah. there. And I'm like, hey, will you get the fuck out of that? I, mean, I understand. My makeup girl, who's really good looking, and all the guys are like, here, just um, can I move you over to the side? And then they casually move her over. But me, they're like, EA, move your ass over. We're good. No, no. See, listen, I don't know who's doing that. We need to kick their asses. Eh? <laughs> but it is the PA, the ca the light person. It's like, hey, I need to kick a ball here. And they're like, oh, we got yeah. shot. We got a shot. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. I fucking hate you. But you're allowed to say that, I guess, because you're with TV. But um, who do you think? Okay, so David Mills? Davis. Yeah, Davis. Davis. Davis Sills? Mills. Da Davis, Davis Mills. Mills. David Mills. David Mills. I said, I said Tyler Heineke this week, and I felt so freaking bad. So I'm not messing this kid's up name up this week. I felt, and here's the thing. This is the worst. We love social media. T's and P's to social media. Um, you know, I thought I came off the game. I'm like, yeah, I didn't get on very much, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, but my one hit I had where Joe Judge was like, I'm not interested in talking to you. Let's try to figure this out here in the second half. Um, I, I said Tyler Heineke, and I was like, yeah, I had a good game. Great. Looked at Twitter, and I was like, Nah, the whole yeah. night was ruined, chest pains, I felt terrible, I want to give the kid a public apology, T's and P's to Taylor Heineke, not Tyler. Yeah, well, Taylor Heineke, you know, he's maybe the next Fitz Magic, mm -hmm. like he might actually yeah. be, so I think you're going to potentially have a long time to build yeah, that relationship. to apologize. Hey, yep, you, you hate social media, huh? You hate social media, it sounded like, that's what it sounded like right there, you hate it. I don't watch it after doing a game because I don't need to hear about my nose looking like a bird. I don't need to hear about oh. my voice, you know, sounding like nails on a chalkboard. And sometimes, as you guys know, you can have a lot of fun with it. Other times you could have a few drinks and then wake up the next morning and be like, oh, God, did I write anything? And you didn't. And you're so glad. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's good and bad, right? There's times that it's fabulous and you can go after the guy with the cat avatar that's talking about how you know, lame you are, and you're like, well, how's your mom doing? Go upstairs and ask her. Oh! Like, things like... Oh! Yeah! I mean, that was a full hot time! <laughs> yeah! Cat Avi guy. Take a hike, dude. Why don't you just mute these people? It has to be the same people every week for you. It has to be. You should just mute them. Get them out of your life forever. Oh, no. It's fun. It's, it's a good time. But after a game, when you screw up a quarterback's name, you're like, oh, damn. Okay, is that biggest fear? For you, what is biggest fear whenever you're on air out there? Dropping an F-bomb. Have you? Cussing. Have you ever? Uh, no. Oh, my God. Now I will. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, social media. Go to social media after you drop a fuck on TV. <laughs> they will love you. I mean, that'll be those that, that cat at you will be like, hey, EA is uh, one of us out there. That'd be, yeah. Yeah. No, um, that are just, I mean, I have blanked out before. You're just like, what have I, what was I talking about? Um, or just saying something really, which I've probably done forever, dumb in front of an athlete. So I think those are, I mean, no pressure. You know, I only get 15 seconds. If the, anybody else screws up, they get a good three, four hours to clear it up. I got 15 seconds and I'm like, God, yeah. what, I've been working all week for that. Yeah. Hey, by the way, that's like punning. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go out there. I'll <laughs> shank. Point. Yeah, I'll go out there and I'll shank one. I got to sit on that for two hours. It's like, all right, can we at least get another chance at this thing, or is my life over? Oh, but we won the game, so everybody's supposed to be happy. I mean, I'm happy, but I shanked one three hours ago. I was never able to fix it. It's a tough thing. It's a tough balance. You got to be mentally tough out there. Is there anything that you've? But said then I'm there on the sidelines to talk to you right when you come back. Like, good job. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Yeah, get you're your not saying anything bad on Twitter. I yeah. promise. Yeah, get your PA guy the fuck out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure out why that just happened, EA. Um, have you ever said anything you're not supposed to say? Like, because I did sideline reporting for uh, the Boca Bowl and uh, <laughs> the first awesome. XFL. Game. It was impossible. I have no idea how you guys do it. Honestly, I have no clue how you do it. That was very difficult. That was one thing that I don't think I'll ever be able to do. I, but I was hearing stuff 
Like I had a couple of friends that were on the coaching staffs at Boca Bowl yeah. in the XFL. And I was hearing stuff and they were literally like, hey, Pat, look for this. Like this is about to happen. And I would just go yeah. right to the mic. Hey, listen to this. <laughs> this guy's about to go. There's like a code, right? There's things you can't say. Have you ever let something out that you're not supposed to say? And has anybody ever like gotten mad at you for that? No, I mean, again, thanks so much for jinxing it. I Jesus. We're told things all the time, which I'm so grateful for that athletes are so good to us and like give us things to look for. You don't want to burn anyone. Um, so, no, I haven't done that. I think the big transition with football versus those West Virginia games was I was allowed to repeat everything I heard on the sidelines in college. I mean, some of my best huddles I ever you know, got to hear were John Calipari, Tom Izzo. That's obviously when I worked basketball. I know you know that. But um, of course. You know, Cal, yeah, Cal of was course. so amazing. He would look at me like because he he would see me standing there because you could be right in it and he would look at me and go EA come listen to this this is going to be good so I'm like okay oh, and you know nice. just, it would be awesome but NFL as you know is different you have to kind of paraphrase what they're saying but no I mean I think burning guys and the information they tell us it's just not worth it that's why you have the uh, glazers and the shefties and all that kind of stuff out there doing the dirty work I am not interested at all Hashtag J knew. Any of that. Hashtag J knew. Ah. That's one J of our things. Jay Glazer always knows. Yeah. Jay he Gla does. A a listen, and that's what Troy says all the time. Unless Jay Glazer's reporting it, I'm not believing it. I think it was like week two of a season that uh, after Harbaugh, he was going to get fired or leave the next year from 49ers. And Jay Glazer was reporting it week two. And I remember we were all meeting in the lobby to go to the game. And or Troy just said, God, he's already re you're reporting this. This is happening. So, yeah. Glaze, uh, Glaze is unbelievable with all his uh, texts and messages and info he gets. I don't remember. His head's like radiating. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's also because all he does is just eat iron. Yeah, yeah, the true. unbreakable gym. I forget. I don't know if we've, we've said this publicly, I think. Draft day, we had to sit on the yeah. Aaron Rodgers shit for like oh, four hours imagine. because Jay knew. Jay literally yeah. called me during a commercial break of my show on draft day. And he was like, what's up with your guy? And I was like. Who's my guy? He was like, Aaron. I was like, wow, well, I don't know. He's like, something big's coming. I'm hearing something big's going on Ooh. right now. And I'm like, Jay, what are you talking about? I'm live right now. He's like, something's coming. And then he just hangs up on me. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, what does that even mean? And then four hours later, it was like, ah, there's all hell has broken loose. Like, it, whenever you guys cover games. So this, I wasn't going to ask you about this, but it kind of led to this because I asked Peyton about this last night. My first question to Peyton was literally like, could you imagine having no say in anything like Aaron did for so long? Like he would not have, that would not have happened with him. And he said, yeah, he no. when you guys go, is it a hard balance of like not pissing off like the GM's narrative and also the player's narrative, the organization and things like that? Has that ever become like something that's tough to do? And the way you, I mean, Joe and Troy are so good and you're electric every single time you get in there. But is that something you guys talk about? About? Is that something you guys chat about or no? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, listen, it, it's a fair question. And I, I look at week one, right? You know, we had this interview with Aaron and um, and I didn't get the exclusive. Let's be honest. I wanted to tweet that. I think Andrew Marchand, and I can't make that guy happy. He's just pissed at me, you know, all the time. But I think oh, he hates I, me I, too. I, I think he does. I think no, he, hates he me loves too. you. He, he like called, I guess Joe said on Saturday night for Yankees Mets that I had the, you know, exclusive sit down with Aaron Rodgers and Marchand tweeted, well, you know, she didn't because Pat McAfee has it every two. We got it. I I, know. I didn't hear that, by the way. Oh, we didn't hear that. We didn't nope, even no. hear that over here. We Here's apologize. me. I was about to retweet. And I, I get it, Andrew. I know I can't do anything that's good enough to be on these sidelines. <laughs> it's not, a, it, it's not a, you know, a sensitive point for me at all. Hey, anyway. mute him. Mute him. What are we even oh, doing? Mute him, EA. Get him no, out. No, but it's just like you can't even, you know, sit down with the guy. We get it. He has Tuesdays with you. But just thinking about that point, oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the question <laughs> that Packers management, I, I, you know, I, I was asking about Packers management and then, you know, asking Aaron follow-up questions. That I'm sure they weren't happy about it, but it's also like we're not there for them. We're not – we're just there to deliver, I think, the news and the facts to – the viewers at home. So we don't really go in with any sort of like fears about that. Anybody? Now there is like, listen, yeah. if there is like draw, I don't know, maybe with the coaching staff, you don't want to harp on anything where it would make things uncomfortable in terms of like dealing with them in the next couple of weeks. If you kind of know the inside information, we're going to be like, yeah, touch on it, but not something where you're drilling at home and you're making it a point of something. Um, I, I think we're pretty fair about that on our crew. And I think you guys do a good job of uh, displaying the game as like a celebration, you know, like positive 
as opposed to picking out all the negatives. Because I assume if you were to talk about any of that negative stuff, that would do numbers on the internet. It'd be huge. But instead of resisting it, resisting the urge of those clicks and keeping it like a celebration, I think is something that your crew does very well, if it means anything at all. And we didn't see any of that. Mm. And I want to let you know, we were excited to watch you chit-chat with him, by the way. So I, I just just know that we live in our own world over here. We mute everybody. Yep. I mean, yeah. We just got a blinder, Jean. Yeah, that's all we got. <laughs> we just go ahead and stay straight ahead. Your interview was fantastic. We appreciate I it. I tried to take a cue out of your book. I wore a tank top. Um, you know, I, I, I've told him before, you know, I just how I, I do. I watch your show all the time. I love it. I think you get the best of people. I was telling Peter Schrager, I know a fan of yours, um, that I it was coming on the show and I was kind of nervous. And he was like, why? And I said, Pat's like the Andy Cohen of sports. Like he gets you to say shit. I'm not drunk while I'm doing this. I was drinking on Andy's, Andy's show when I did it. But I was like, he just gets you to say the things that everybody wants to hear. And, uh, you know, Andy goes right in there with some of these questions. But um, no, that's the I real housewives guy. Before. That's the real housewives guy. The guy that he's real rich, rich, smart yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, he created that whole thing, right? Didn't, isn't that Bravo, his thing? Yes. He, he created that uh -huh. whole thing. Genius. Hey, respect, Genius. respect to that guy. I'm respect. nothing like him, by the way. <laughs> no, Genius but just... you kind of are of the sports world where you you make everybody feel comfortable. You get, you know, you ask the questions that people are afraid to, and you get to the gossip of it all. And I told Aaron, I said, I've watched the show so many times, especially when I prep for interviews with him. And I'm jealous. I feel like you are able to say whatever the heck you want. I would love to be uncensored like this. Can you imagine Joe Troy, Aaron, and Tom Rinaldi on the sidelines uncensored? Oh, it'd be awesome. Unbelievable. The NFL would never. I mean, let it Tom eat. Rinaldi would still make us cry, but <laughs> yeah. it would be unbelievable. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. We've been asking for that type of coverage for the NFL for a long time. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to push for you guys to do it. We're trying to push for you guys to do it. But uh, I think the reason why is anybody that talks to me. Knows Knows that they're talking to somebody dumber than them, right? And I, Stop like, it. no, that's real. Like, hey, anything that I'm about to say to this idiot, he has done something worse and dumber. So they just kind of <laughs> let it eat. So your intelligence and success is to your detriment <laughs> in this particular case. But uh, this is something I don't know how long it'll last. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Aaron, we've seen, we've all seen like the super viral clips, whether it's like Saban or Popovich or whoever that kind of dunk on like a reporter. You've had so many interactions with like coaches and players. Are there any guys who like after the fact you've been like, oh, wow, fuck this asshole, like for, you know, showing me up or whatever? Or is it something where you've been in this long enough time, like you understand like, okay, I just have to have thick skin, like this kind of stuff's going to happen. I know I have to have thick skin, but I'm also, I mean, you can't tell it all I'm sensitive. Um, yeah, I just, you know what I think the thing is for me is I just want them to respect me and know that I work my ass off and I'm studying and I'm not trying to ask dumb questions. Look, I panic. I sweat every time I have to grab Bill Belichick at halftime. And, oh, yeah. you know, there's a couple of times I've just been like, Oh crap, crap. But I, you know, it's funny. I was talking to my husband about it and he had a really, really hard, tough coach. One of the toughest coaches in the NHL, Daryl Sutter. I don't know if you know anything about the Sutter brothers. Oh. I know it's Canadian, but Pat, you would love oh. these guys, but he is We're talking about fucking tough. sticks on Pocky. Come on. Now we are. Look at his dangles, but he, uh, you know, when it, it comes to the football field, like they are so tough. They are so hard, but off the field, super great. But yeah, there's been a couple of guys. I mean, listen, when I first interviewed Nick Saban, I used to be at arm's length from him because I was so intimidated. I was so scared. I didn't want to piss him off. Now I'm going to name my firstborn Saban. And this is coming from a Florida Gator. Here's one of my pom poms um, because I, that guy is just a God and he, I am into him. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I also dig it though, like how tough they are. I think that's awesome. Like yeah. I want to crack it, you know? Yeah, but they also appreciate like if you come with any type of confidence. Firing. Yeah, like if you're scared at all, it's like, um, I feel like with a lot of those people, it's almost like a pit bull, right? If a pit bull oh, yeah. senses that you're scared at all, it's a completely different game between you and the dog. If, if you're not scared at all, it's a different, I think a lot of those, you know, in my experience now being the punter Hey, I'm much lower than you on the totem pole, but whenever I come talk to them, those, I am. Yeah, your PA is standing in front of my fucking neck <laughs> on third and long, okay? And I'm being told that I'm not allowed to speak to it, but I think if you just come in, like, 
if you just come in with confidence, they appreciate that. And I think that's why you crush it every time because although it sounds like you're, you do say you have low panic attacks or whatever, it, it never comes across on television is that way. But the panic attacks are what hype me up. There's, they are what like, as psycho as that sounds, like I am full blown shaking before a first hit. And I've done this as you guys so kindly pointed out for a hundred years. <laughs> But I, you know, I am shaking. Like I have got to get this first one. This is a good story, and this is about your boy. I'm it has not saying. been a hundred years, by the way. Fresh <laughs> into oh, the yeah. TV Come game, on. Aaron Andrews, brand new, first time, rising star yeah. in this entire thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead, though. No, no, no. Yeah, so it was probably my second or third year. I was with Joe and Troy, and stop me if you've heard this before. But Aaron had a, a calf injury. Aaron Rodgers, and uh, oh, we got it. You got a calf. You need to stretch those things, you know. So um, I, my first hit was about the calf. It's cold. Blah blah blah. We're doing a rehearsal, and I was just effing up this whole thing about this damn calf that we've all heard about before. And I say, you know, we joke about it, but. I'm screwing up in the rehearsal and finally my producer goes, will you get your phone? And I said, why? And he goes, Joe's trying to call you. And I was like, well, why can't he just talk to me? So I picked up the phone and I was like, hello. And he goes, will you stop? And I said, what? And he goes, will you fucking stop? And I said, what? And he goes, it's a calf injury. You got <laughs> this. You are not performing brain surgery. Will you just get it out? Oh. I was like, you're so right. But yeah, you know, you, but I also think that's what makes me love this thing so much is that you geek yourself up so much. You just want to do a good job and stay out of the punter's way. Well, no, no. Get in the punter's way. Do what you got to do. Cover the game. We need the money from the coverage much more than we need to punt mm -hmm. that one particular rep. But I think that thing about the butterflies is good, right? I mean, you still. I do too. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. I think I still get mm -hmm. that. I'm not somebody that gets nervous much. I am rather comfortable in almost every situation. But that energy, that excitement that kind of happens right before something big, it happens in here when I'll come into this show. If I know, like today, for instance, we have fucking Aaron Andrews on the yeah. show. Yeah. Well, I had, uh, you know what I mean? I, today was one of those days. So I hope you have that forever. And uh, we've all been very lucky to watch your work, EA. We appreciate you so much. I love you. I appreciate it. Can we, uh, can we do this more often? Hey, you tell us, dude. Hey, that is on, yeah. that is your, yeah. like, we've been to asking to get yeah. for so long. You, yeah. he, for not that many years, because honestly, we didn't know you existed until what, like, like right. two, three a years year ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> but since you came into the thing, I mean, we've been trying our best. I mean, that's what we've been trying to do. But yeah, we would love that. We'd love that if that was possible. We could get into some real good gossip, you know, in the next couple of weeks, all the tea. Yeah. That's what the kids say. Yeah, and then I become actual Andy Cohen. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Now we're playing a game, uh, ladies and gentlemen. NFL. Shot yeah, yeah, okay. Now that's a German thing. I don't know if Andy Cohen stole that, but I, I do. <laughs> the, the, the big old oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You ever miss one? Oh, I have. man. Everybody just dumps a ski on the head. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Let's Shot talk. ski? Yeah. I missed my smoothie today and had to change my shirt at the last minute. I had greens all over. You know, get your greens in. See, that's something I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I learned something today that you yeah, are you, look great. you are awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, NFL <laughs> legend Aaron Andrews. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Woo. All right. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Every Tuesday, I guess. I mean, we were asking for her for a long time. So She's not available. She's not, not available. available. Long time, but like but not that long. But yeah, long not, yeah, not, no, not like that long. A couple years now, though. I did think about that as I was talking about it, <laughs> as I was introing her. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, she's fucking Aaron Andrews. Yeah, respectfully. Dude, you're Aaron Andrews. Yeah. I do like the fact that she does She does have a little petty in her. Yeah. I like that. I like she has a little petty in her. I don't like the people, you know, she seems to get distraught by social media because I think there's a lot more positive than negative on social media. You just have to mute the, the crew that is normally around there. And then it's a whole different experience on social media because I think a lot of people are big fans of old Aaron Andrews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Plus, there are Ann Killians all over the place on Twitter. You just we will talk. Really, we know. will talk about that lady. She is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, you know, and that's not easy to explain to everybody. Like, uh, like, I genuinely get a good laugh when somebody <laughs> says, like, depending upon how I feel like they are, you know, if somebody's actually trying to bring, like, attack me or whatever, and I can tell that they actually hate me as a human, I'm like, all right, I'll mute this person. This person's gone. It's been a fun run. Or I'll block them. Right. Like, hey, I will block this person. Just, hey, see you later out of my life. But there are some people that just take shots at me. I'm like, oh, I enjoy this. Yeah. This person is awesome. Last night, it was Ann Killian. Yeah. Ann Killian said, 
uh, get this douche off of my TV. Okay, this douche is making me change the channel. And then she followed up with three or four of them. He's still here. Why is this guy <laughs> still here? I love Ann Killian. She hated everybody, including me, so it was an honor to be a part of that. But those types of people are amazing. Uh huh. But I see how some people don't love that. I'm, I'm more of a WWE person where it's like, you got to have Ann Killian around. Oh, yeah. You got to have that around. Always has an axe to grind. Hour two is on the other side. AJ Hawk will join us and your phone calls at one 834 McAfee. We'll see you in six minutes. I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course. Right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one on one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we can probably have a couple drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. Representing the NFL. Out of the Shoeless Golf Club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent, representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today, he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. <laughs> we were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like, we were really, like, we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, "Start down three. With like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work." Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, "Pippen ain't easy." Oh. <laughs> Are you down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips in from fucking 400 yards out. <laughs> All right, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I told Dell. Oh, I was yeah. like, Dell, what the fuck you lying to me? He was like, Well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me, and I was like, Dell, he. Buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun and a beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers, we say. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, that's Scotty. That's the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> hey, that's most no fucking in the three years. Are you right? <laughs>
I do believe after that argument, though, people would say I was a better person than fucking you are, dude. No, 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 because everyone I just read on Twitter was like, oh my God, this guy rollerblades, I need to start doing that. Too. No, that's because you mute all the other people that are actually on my side and they're telling you you're not the right person. No, I refuse to mute anybody because I love everybody. Oh, you like freedom of speech? How come then you're, uh, you're not going uh, on the other side? Uh, I do love freedom of speech. That's wow. why I'm not muting anybody. I'm better than you, you are. About? I'm, no, better, I'm better than you are. Everybody's saying it. No. Oh, yeah. yeah, everybody say I'm better no. than you are. I heard it. We just did, by the way, still batting a thousand on Paul's yes. <laughs> yes. I feel so good about it. We even got into the reaction to the punditry. Yes. <laughs> we're batting a fucking thousand out there. Every side. The people say we're not well rounded. We don't have depth. Did you hear what we just fucking did? Come dude? on. Wow. Let's go to the phones, man. I'm Roman, a men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation, gone. No more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including Erectile dysfunction. Come on! Bye bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 2, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, years after zero. We'll begin right now. Whoa. Rolling my R's. Hell yeah. Hear that? I'm a cultured man. That's mm-hmm. right. That's what people will say. Speaking of culture, the NFL is upping the amount of international players they're hoping for by yes. making it a much easier process. They're having yeah. a European combine, a Mexican combine, and then if you perform well enough at those, you'll be come to America and go through an entire process. Tom Pelissero, the arrow, who read this directly from a memo <laughs> oh, and then yeah. was able to put it up on Twitter quicker than everybody else. The man is a machine, mm-hmm. an actual robot, maybe even a... Cyborg. Yeah. Oh. He's cyber LinkedIn. Yeah, Cyber LinkedIn. Neuralink. A computer. Neuralink. Neuralink. There it is from the NFL. Tom Pelissero is reporting the NFL International Combine will take place on October 12th at London's Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Hey, hey let's go, Spurs. Hey, come on, you Spurs. Hey, come on, you Spurs. Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Uh, with select players advancing to train in the U.S. and potentially being allocated to NFL teams for the 2022 season, another combine will be held later in October in Mexico. This is a massive part of the NFL's worldwide growth, is getting players from all the Every country, basically, we got a Chilean tight end. Obviously, this is a picture of Bjorn Vanna yeah. <laughs> of Germany who left his high school and came over here and lived with somebody. I mean, it has become a process in a lot of people's dreams around the world. The NFL is trying to make it easier because the NFL knows the more international players you have, the more fans internationally you yeah. have. Ah. You see, and that is what we are trying to accomplish. Australia is becoming an absolute breeding ground for punters, and now can everywhere kind of start becoming that. That's what the NFL hopes. Get some players in there, get some dreams come true, get some hopes, get some opportunities, then you start getting little smaller camps, maybe in these countries, and then the game grows, and all of a sudden soccer's the number two sport in all those other sport, yep. uh, those other countries. That's, right. Damn right. That's what's probably going to happen. It's just oh, another yeah. Olympic sport for us to dominate. Bingo. And then we also have football in the Olympics, yep. and mm-hmm. we're going over to Barcelona and we're Ooh. saying hey is Messi here Messi isn't here Barcelona now loses I yep. mean that is just mm. that is what the NFL will do isn't that right Gump oh he's being uh, no. I wonder if Harry oh, Kane no. will be kicking footballs at, at Tottenham Hotspur he said something he's thinking about doing right in the future That'd or whatever sweet yeah. Not every soccer player can just jump over to kicking footballs, though. No. I would like that to be known. And I, I am tired of the disrespect from the soccer community. This guy can come kick balls blah blah blah. He can't. Yeah. 
And if he could, he would when he retires because mm -hmm. they're paying good and you don't have to do much. Now, there are, there are some soccer players that transition very easily into the game. Okay, I was very... I, my swing was a very natural fit for the football, but I've seen plenty of great soccer players with big legs not be able to kick a football at all. And maybe they'll be able to work at it and get there. If you have leg speed, I guess you have a chance. But that's two different swings now. Talking about a round, a round ball instead of an oblong. Exactly. Oh, okay. We're talking about a sweet spot that's about that big versus a sweet spot that's about that big. I mean, you're talking about two different games here, two, mm -hmm. different, two different styles of life, too. If you're Pressure's on Bjorn as well. He better start fucking coaching his ass off because his guy's got a chance now, and if they don't make it, it's on him. Yeah. Absolutely. He needs to look himself in the mirror every, every morning. That's yeah, he right. needs to go, I ain't for me. Mm. For you. Yeah. <laughs> Nine for, no. Put the paddle down. Yeah, that's right. Let him know over there in Germany. We need some more players. Joining us now is an American from Ohio, although a lot of people in Ohio will have a lot of questions about this man potentially missing five of his last eight days of work. Wow. Yeah, that's a but ridiculous. Had to serve America here this week, mm -hmm. so sure, I guess we kind of understand how this goes. Ladies and gentlemen, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, and Ryder Cup participant, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, A.J. Hey! What's going on, What's dude? up, guys? Hey, uh, oh, I was talking to some Ohio people. Hey, good job with Peyton and Eli, by the way. Honestly, I don't know if you've talked about it. I thought it was great. You were very entertaining for everybody, I think. Thank you so much. Uh, I, it was not easy. You know, the tech thing, I think we experience it every day. You experience it much more than I do, obviously, because you're the only one that's out mm -hmm. of the room and everybody's in the room. So it can be a little bit difficult. But you had to come in there with, you know, you have to come in there, I think, and then get out and then come in. There was a couple awkward moments, but they just let me play the hits in there. So I had a great time, AJ. I appreciate you. Did you watch it last night or this morning? No, I actually watched it live. The, the game went, like, the first half, I feel like, went pretty quick. So I'm yeah. like, all right, Pat's going to be on here before I know it. And it was still decently late. But once you started, you were on there so long, I wasn't going to just all of a sudden turn off and go to bed halfway through. I was struggling. And to be honest, the only way I made it through was my Celsius energy drink. Shout and out. Uh, Joining oh, yeah. Manning cast was amazing, but it was tough to stay up until the fourth quarter. Our friends at Celsius Energy saw that and knew they had to help me out for Aaron Rodgers Tuesday today, and they definitely are. Hell yeah. yeah. The turnaround was too quick to set up a Celsius promo code for you all, but that just means it's the perfect time to remind you that they also brought us the amazingly delicious Fast Protein Bars. They have two great flavors, the Salted Caramel Peanut Crunch, which oh, is yeah. oh, delicious. delicious, and White chocolate cookies and cream 20 grams of protein less than two grams of sugar low carb and for a limited time when you go to amazon.com at the link in the description of this youtube.com forward slash pat mcvee show video and use promo code 20 start fast that's two zero start fast you get 20 percent off your order this offer will expire soon so get your fast I mean, they're fucking unbelievable. Are they calling them protein bars? They uh, are calling them. They're not protein no, bars. They're candy bars. Yeah. They're unbelievably. And AJ, I think you even ruined a couple of these when you were yeah. in the office, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, I ate a few of them, yes. Well, yeah, but then you left yeah. the wrapper. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Crumbs, yeah. crumbs yeah. all over your desk. Yeah. 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 That's it, not true. It's first a, of, it's bring actually, a trash can in that studio, bud, too. There needs to be a trash there's can. There's one right, right, right there. And right outside. Yeah. Open your eyes. I mean, unbelievable. But what you won't throw into that trash can is anything that resembles the fast protein bars because mm -hmm. once you see how soft and delicious they are you're, they're not supposed to be that delightful as they are go to amazon.com link in our description and use 20 start fast for 20 percent off your order right now it expires soon shout to celsius i mean they did bring me a lot last night i do appreciate that what's the shirt you're wearing there pal oh boy what am i wearing today oh this guy no, that's a, you know old american guitarist you know what's his name Oh, this this is actually my Chuck Berry shirt. I have a couple other old musicians. This one's Chuck Berry. <laughs> is there any reason for the Chuck Berry shirt, or is just no, you I've like had his a few, music? I mean, I've had a lot of different artists. I have different shirts on those. I don't always wear them on the show, but this one just happened to come up today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it just happened to. Yeah, it just so happened. Uh, I mean, we haven't talked about Chuck Berry in in some time. Yeah, and months. And AJ yeah. was pissed. AJ was so mad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it wasn't like by design. It just happened. Oh, to oh yeah, shit. I do. You happen to show up. Someone placed. Do you, do? Do you got a hot juice. topic. You you do. do you <laughs> shop like a twelve year old. How how do you have a Chuck Berry shirt? Come on, I have ready to too, go. Though. I have two. Well, of course, Hell you yeah. Do. yeah. Of course you do. All right, let's get to it. Last night, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is back. I, can you change your shirt? I mean, how, <laughs> this is absurd. Done with this shit, Hawk. And his guitar, like, if you actually look like, it kind of looks like it's... <laughs> it oh, does. yeah. It does. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know what you're talking about. I just like his music. Yeah, I of can't course. kiss you, baby. Yeah, he's creative, obviously. Um, 
Last night, Aaron Rodgers came all the way back. And he said last week, hey, everybody needs to relax. He was getting attacked for being too calm, too relaxed, too comfortable. On our interview, I actually told him, like, hey, people are going to be mad that you're not, what, sweating and yelling right now after that loss to the Saints 38-3 opening week, especially with how the offseason was. And he basically just said, hey, we got 16 more games. Everybody needs to chill out. We've had a couple of these, all right, and then we always bounce back. They did in a large way. Defense got some big stops, although there was some key mistakes as well. And I don't know what the Lions team is in the end but it felt like Aaron in that offense was rolling AJ Hawk I mean that throw to Tanya that you saw Ooh. Peyton you know Peyton almost fell out of his chair and it was like when especially when you watch the replay it's great coverage by the backer but it's true if your head's turned the quarterback that is as good as Aaron's like oh he's open he's not looking at me or the ball so I can sneak this thing right over his shoulder but man yeah he looked like he was just dialed in from the jump I wasn't sure if their defense would hold up for four quarters, but I think they played much better in the second half. I think so, too, and that's because Matt LaFleur got the boys fired up. He told uh, Matt LaFleur told Joe Barry, allegedly, he said, hey, get pressure on golf or drop back into coverage, and Joe Barry said, that fires me up. <laughs> and then uh, the second half, the defense played a lot better. That did, allegedly, they both, did they both say this happened? Some, that, some beat reporter tweeted it after the game, yeah. Yeah, so allegedly this did happen. Who knows if that's exactly how it went, but I like the fact that Joe Barry's getting fired up because Matt LaFleur's like, hey, you're going to have to fucking do something. Like, ah, that fires me yeah. up. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to start calling Barry game. You know what I mean? But did they really, did, do you really think LaFleur said, hey, either, either dial up some pressure or drop into coverage? Okay, as opposed to what? That's what we're already doing is one of those. Well, I wonder if LaFleur just looked at him and goes, are we even trying? Are yeah. we even try? I wonder if that's what LaFleur did. You know, LaFleur, some FaceTime on him last night with the intentional grounding yeah. and then the celebration and the crowd yeah. ramping up the, the crowd. The watch, the yellow banded watch is nice. Okay. All right. What is that supposed I mean, to mean? No, I, I, mean, I mean nothing. I, there's no inside joke. I'm just saying he wears that watch with a sweet yellow band. I, I don't see other coaches. I, do you, does it have to be a Nike? I'm wondering if it has to be licensed or something. Okay, he has great swag. I think he's he what does. you are you, guys, are you. First off, you guys are diving way. The, I don't, everything I say doesn't have 14. Like, well, hidden, there's no yeah, reason to mention his watch. Yeah, it no. had to be a I reason. I because other coaches don't wear them. You're wearing a Chuck Berry t-shirt, AJ. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard. Okay. It's hard to take you serious, but I, it was it was great. No more jokes for me. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't know if that's real or not, what you just no. said. That, that's I told the, you it was. You told us what is real. Come on, man. Football. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not forget this guy bet on the Lions last night. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. Ah, 10 yeah, and hey, 4. I'm, hands shit. up. I'm 10 and 4. I know. Hey, you were right, man. With the, the cover, I know you were worried about it for a little bit. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I was. There was a bet that I didn't mind making because I'm like, okay, cool. They, they, they covered. I want the Packers do, to do well. I am very biased in smart. this situation, so I was okay losing that one. That's smart. People have been telling Foxy to do that for a long time, just bet on the other team against the Lions, and then if the Lions win, wow, celebration. And if the other team wins, ah, I'm making money off this. It's <laughs> yeah. classic fan betting, and you know, some people say that it's you know hypocritical because you're kind of putting in the universe that you want the other team to win, so mm -hmm. are you actually a fan? But really, I feel like you're just a smart degenerate in that entire thing. You you ended the weekend 10-4. and four. I think you should be pretty proud going into week two, especially going into the Ryder Cup. Now, have we learned anything else? Is this going to be on TV? Are we going to be able to watch you play golf against the Euros, as you call them, just European human beings over there? No, I don't I don't think any of it is going to be on any kind of TV or streaming or whatever. It's it's, it's just going to be there for the people there, I guess. And then but they are they did say I think they're going to have people they'll give me like the, any videos or photography they take of me so I can use that. I'm sure Sweet. I'll be posting all, all the time, you know that. Yeah, you're a big poster, big social media guy, especially with your new influencer t-shirt of Chuck Berry there. Right. Uh Packers, is this going to be something we're just going to see going forward, do you think? Yeah, yeah I believe so. This you hope, but Niners next, right? Yeah, tough game. Uh -huh. Sunday Night Football. That'll be good. We'll In see who they are, San I think, Francisco, a little bit. San Francisco, Sunday Night Football. Is it last time they played them, that MC Championship game, where they gave no. up 183 yards? They played them last year last with year. COVID on a Thursday night. The Niners had, like, nine guys go out with COVID, and the Packers routed them. In Green but Bay or in no, San Francisco? No, it was in San Francisco. How come they're going out to San Fran so much, you think? What's that all about? I don't know. The two previous times were – because the Niners were the number one seed. But. That's fascinating because we always had to go up to the fucking New England there with Peyton. Oh, whenever yeah. at the towards the end, we always had to go up to New England, had to go up to New England every single year. I wonder if it's because the Niners and the Packers are so high, the schedule makers are like, let's do this thing. It's in where Santa Clara. Yep. And the Niners are fully healthy right now? 
No, they got no. a lot of injuries. They at are back. decimated. Running Their back. top three running backs. I think uh, Mostert's out for the year with that knee injury. Their next two guys, Sermon got concussion. Uh, Mitchell has a knee injury, I believe. Their secondary's now, banged up. Yeah, secondary's banged up. They signed this dude off the Bengals practice squad, though. Look out! Okay, so this is a good test for the Green Bay Packers team. I think this is, uh, well, and I don't think they're going to know what they're going to be until like week seven, week eight, maybe. You know what I mean? I don't think any team really has any idea right now. But these are good things for you to rely on and to turn back and look at later in the season. They, them being able to bounce back from 38-3 to doing what they did on Monday Night Football, they'll be able to talk about that later if they have another unfortunate loss. Like, hey, this happens, let's keep it going. That's why that steady you know, mindset of, of your quarterback is paramount, although everybody seemed to hate it just last week. I can't wait to see what he's like today, AJ. Oh, I, I think he'll be uh, you know, just as he, he always is today, win or lose, but you know that mindset. If you do freak out and panic and get on the roller coaster that is an NFL season, that's like contagious. Then everybody around you starts to panic. Like, oh wait, some young guy. Like oh, my my position coach is freaking out, saying co- the head coach is going to kill him. So then it just has a trickle down effect to everybody, and it's true. Like it's a long year, man. You can't do that. Yeah, and it's interesting because there's two different ways to look at it. There are some teams that celebrate obviously heavy, and then if you celebrate heavy, then what does that mean? You have to do when you lose, right? That means you have to equally take it as hard because if a win in a regular season week two or week three gives you enough empowers you enough to celebrate like in a massive way then it all also carries enough weight to devastate you then right potentially and i you know as a young guy and we overreact now on monday when i was younger i used to live and die with literally every punt that i had it was like because i didn't know if i was going to continue to be on the team or not so literally every punt i kind of lived and died with it and then once you start to watch what other people like jim caldwell and peyton manning dallas clark uh gary brackett jeff saturday robert mathis freeing all these people once you see them kind of set the tone like Hey, relax, dude. Like, you're going to have another one. And if it's good, great. And if it stinks, get it next time. It's like that type of mentality was kind of through the entire building. And it's just like that type of culture, I think, is the winning culture. But every team's trying to get there. And can you get there without excitement, without that whole thing? I'm not 100% sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't. I mean, there's you can definitely, like, you should celebrate every win. They always talk about how hard it is to win a game in the NFL. And if you're on a winning team and you you beat a team that you were favored by 14 or something afterwards. Like, hey, your coach is going to be it's tough to win a game in the NFL. You know that, guys. Don't t- we don't take any of these for granted. But they do because then the next second he's like, all right, flush this one. We're on to the next one. We have a big one next week. And then, okay, we celebrated for about 12 seconds. I love the classic, like, we have 24 hours. Yeah. All right, celebrate this one. And then I don't want to hear about it ever again. <laughs> no. And like the, that 24 hours is not 24 hours, by the way. That 24 hours is until you fall asleep tonight. And then the next morning, we don't want to fucking hear about it, by the way. Like you come into the facility on Monday, and for us, Tuesdays was our off day. Monday was like, come in. There's some film, maybe some treatment and stuff like that. There was some reminiscing of stories from the game, and you learn some stuff, and it's a cool day. But as soon as it becomes like meeting time or anything, it's like, all right. That fucking stunk. None, none of that matters. This is what we got to do. Did you hear what Bruce Arians said at halftime? Um, going into halftime this past weekend, they were up what twenty-one fourteen, I think, over Atlanta. Going into halftime, and Bruce Arians was caught by the Bucks radio network going into half. They're up seven against a divisional opponent and have looked good. This is what Bruce Arians said going into halftime of that game. Well, Coach, I know they got the three there at the end of the half. What are you happiest with, especially on offense? Not a damn thing. I'm not happy about a damn thing. We turned the ball over. This should be a 35-point game by half right now. We're not happy about shit. Defensively, what are you going to build on in the second half, Coach? Nothing. nothing. Too many damn penalties. Same thing right there. Too many penalties. There you go. That's Mondays. That's Mondays <laughs> for almost every coach that wins. He was just doing that at halftime. I would have loved to hear what he said at halftime. It probably sounded a lot like that sound. We ain't happy about shit, he said on that radio network. Imagine if he saw guys smiling, like walking in and they were smiling or something. He'd freak out. Oh, fucking personal foul Jeff. What's going on? Here? <laughs> like that type of stuff is – that's what coaches are great at, by the way. And that's why I think like Bill Belichick – has been so successful. We saw it out of Saban, obviously. He was able to do it with his team whenever they're going in the FCS. This team's this, 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 and this. The ability to make sure that the team doesn't get too high on the highs or too low on the lows, too, on the other side. Like, hey, we got to lift them up. Lost to a good team. We got unlucky. Like, those types of things happen. Managing the mental state of your team is a 
massively important role to everybody. And I think if you have a quarterback that is just like always like this, I think that helps out the coach immensely in the floor. Oh, it has to because you don't have to sit there and worry about your quarterback. Hey, uh, like walk into your first staff meeting after a game where you lost and the QB threw a, a pick that, uh, you know, lost it for his team. Like, oh, how's old Billy today? Like, oh, you know, head case. We, we're probably – we're not going to get him back mentally till Thursday this week. So good luck game plan. <laughs> like, right, that so, can happen. All right, so we'll move. We'll move practice schedule to Thursday. You think Thursday? What about Wednesday? Anything on anything on Wednesday? We'll just do uh, conditioning on Wednesday, a little strength. And yeah, he might be gone Thursday too. I mean, that was a bad pick. I talked to him last night, and he literally said, uh, "I want to go run in front of a train." So <laughs> we're gonna have to wait for that a little bit. We're gonna have to wait for that a little bit. But that's real, man. That is a very real thing. Think how stressful that job is as a as a quarterback of an NFL team. Like, if you truly think about all that is on your shoulders and all the people that Eat. what you do affects. Okay, like, yeah, don't. hopefully you don't let that seep in. But if you do, it'd be a tough day. All the people that eat off of your performance, basically. Yeah. And that's just not your teammates. That's not just your teammates' families, extended families, neighborhoods, communities. That's just not the coaches. The coaches' families, extended neighborhoods, communities. Mm -hmm. Talking about every fan, basically, the lifeline. Like, I grew up in Pittsburgh. If the Steelers lost... The city was miserable. Like, that is just how it goes. And I don't know if Cordell Stewart knew that when I was a kid. <laughs> and I don't know if uh, old Tommy Gunn knew that or Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know. Or Neil O'Donnell. He obviously didn't know it in the Super Bowl. Yeah, threw that thing away. Guy, he yeah, he threw that thing away. Traitor. But that's a real thing. So it, it, it's a it's a CEO type mentality. You have to have a quarterback. And Aaron was getting killed for it last week. I mean, absolutely killed for it. Slaughter. Can't wait to hear what he has to say here coming up in 39 minutes. Let's talk about. Uh, Couple things going on around the NFL. Our guy, JC Treader. Yep. Yes. Yep. President of the NFL PA, center for the Cleveland Browns, friend of the show. He's been on the show before. Now, the NFL PA, not necessarily friend of the show. No. I think the show has been uh, not necessarily as friendly to the NFL PA as JC Treader might want, but I think JC Treader could even acknowledge the fact that maybe if they were a little bit better at what they did this show, which is very stern and fair, mm -hmm. would treat it as such. Absolutely. So I think he actually appreciates that. He's put out a couple different statements from the NFL PA about the way the rules happen in the competition can because the initial narrative that was coming out, seeping out as we were, and I, not we, I was throwing tantrums about this point of emphasis taunting rule whenever it was announced. I was loud about how this should not be a point of emphasis. I understand it's a rule. If you want to remind teams that it's a rule and have teams handle it, that's okay. But a point of emphasis means, hey, we're going to focus on this. We're going to crack down on this and we want this to change. It's like, why are we trying to take emotion out of something, especially in the world that we're in right now, in a sport that revolves around emotion? Then the narrative came out somehow. The NFLPA actually were the ones that were looking for this rule. Treader came out and said, nah, that's bullshit. And then Treader came out even more in explaining the entire situation in a tweet in a post We're finding it. he basically said the competition committee uh consists of 11 people that the commissioner appoints and then one nflpa representative and that was kind of our question the entire time like are players involved in any of this tackling or any of these rules in this entire thing he's like yeah we get one spot and it's 11 to 1 and everybody else is basically voted by roger goodell yeah so well, yeah. And do we know all the eleven people though? Are they who is it? We knew eight of them. Coaches and owners, or what? Yeah, yeah. So this is the original tweet from the NFLPA. For those who aren't a fan of new taunting rule, we aren't either. Rules like this are adopted through the competition committee, which includes eleven members, ten selected by the commissioner, and one NFLPA rep. Okay, so the commissioner selects these people. I think Tomlin's on there. Yeah, Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera. And we have heard from some Steelers players. Uh, I don't know if it's on air or not air, but Tomlin doesn't necessarily love everything that happens. I think this is a legit, like, hey, you got to have a 6-5 vote here. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a lot of potential frustration from within. And if the players only have one seat at the table, I mean, what the f you, you don't have a seat yeah. at the table, by the way. You don't have a seat no. at the table. And it's not, they're not elected. Like, the committee's not elected by the players or by anybody else. So I would imagine, too, like, say you really you feel strongly against, like, a, a potential rule but it's already like heavily in favor it's going to pass like you're not are you going to sit there and fight it and stay in around for another 2 days in these meetings or however they do this like there's no way why would you classic married guy you got to pick your battles you know like <laughs> for this particular one it's you, like politics it feels like an uphill battle if you if you truly like are, feel strongly about something like all right am i willing to dig my heels in here and sit here for 2 days and argue with these guys i'm staring down three votes that need to be swung the opposite direction and it appears as if they are very, very firm 
in yeah. their commitment to yeah. this. Am I going to do an entire pitch on why this is bullshit and why this won't work? Yes, I will let them know that. But I'm not going to stick around and glad hand everybody and hopefully turn them around because those people aren't going to turn around. You know why? They were empowered by Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell says, hey, I appreciate your brain. What you do is right. We need you on a competition committee. If, if Roger Goodell said, hey, Pat, I want you to shape the league for me, like it'd be hard for me to listen to somebody else too. You know what I mean? I think that would be something difficult. And when it all seems to be coming from the same perspective... Well, not all, but at least a majority vote seems to come from the same perspective. You can see how these bullshit rules happen. And the point of emphasis is my biggest issue. So to everybody that is saying like, you know, it's bad for a game when these scumbags are out, just play football. You know, you don't have to dance on. And I don't want to get into the entire like, hey, a life could be changed on that play. Not just one life, like 10 of them could be changed. And there should be emotions and we shouldn't be pulling back emotions. The same things you love in the game of football is provided by emotional people. You want them to be passionate, but you think they're not passionate. Then when they show that they're passionate, it's a penalty. I mean, you can't have it both ways. But it feels like when rules like this happen, it's because the NFL wants to change the way something is going. So it's like the NFL wants to take away emotions from the game is what this feels like to me. And I don't think that's good for the NFL. They just signed a $110 billion deal, so they know a lot better than me, I guess. But why would you ever want to do that? And why would anybody on the competition committee be for it? I just, maybe they're just completely out of touch with everything, you think? I'm, I'm sure there's definitely some of them that are very out of touch. And I'm sure if you ask them, they wouldn't say, hey, we're not trying to take emotion out. And they're going to. They, you know, they have a propaganda clip that's two and a half minutes long of, hey, look at all this emotion that was not flagged. So I don't know what their argument could be. I'm guessing that would be part of it. But it's all like, don't they say we don't need little kids watching football and thinking it's cool to stand over top of somebody? Ian, Ian Rapport said that to yeah. me, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, Ian, well, why don't, why don't you just tell your kid, like, hey, that guy worked his ass off to get to that moment. And that was a display of success from all of his hard work. Why don't you tell that? And he said, well, I guess that's right. It's like, yeah. Yeah. There's I've had to do that. Kids do that. Like, in eight year olds will, will do that. And I'll see him, like, do these, like, celebrations they see. And they'll stand over top of a dude and, like, like stomp him, just do crazy stuff every once in a while during, like, Whoa. scrimmages and stuff, usually during practice. And I have to tell him, I'm like, the other coaches, luckily, they do a good job of shutting them down right away. But like they see it and they do it. But it's not the NFL's responsibility. That's ours as coaches to stop it. Well, this is like the classic don't say fuck because my kid will say, well, be a better parent. You know, and, and I'm not a parent, so I might be speaking out of pocket there. It's like you should tell your kid, hey, adult, just like cigarettes have an age and gambling has an age and everything that is – you know, come a part of drinking has an age. Like you can also teach them like, hey, some of these words you can't say until you're an adult. And that has become something that has just got tossed out the window, by the way. No, no, it's not my, this is your job to teach my kid that. It's like, what happened here? You know, the word fuck is on the internet 7,000 times. I don't even know what to tell you. The FCC, I guess, is still against it or whatever, but that's that same situation where it's like other people are teaching my kids stuff. And instead of me correcting it, and this is once again coming from somebody that doesn't have a kid. And my kid's going to be the worst child on earth. So I understand that this is probably an impossible task. But instead of just correcting it and explaining why that's happening and when the proper time is to do such a thing, if you want to be that type of guy, and if that's how you want to play, like I think those are the things that should happen in theory, I guess. I'm not actually in there. But that seems like what should happen in theory to counteract all this bullshit. Ain't that right, AJ, or no? Yeah, yeah, it should. I mean, I guess p parents try to say, oh, we thought – we could sit here and listen or watch this, and then all of a sudden they start talking about sex or there's cussing in it. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. I, it's a weird thing with what? certain kids. Like, we don't sit there and cuss around my kids all the time, and other parents don't always do it. But some parents are very comfortable doing it. And but kids are impressionable, whatever. It's ultimately it's up to your parents. Like they're gonna see everything at school. They're gonna hear everything. We can't shelter them from all of it. Like, all we can do is try to help them make good decisions. And that's the internet too, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know you can have parental controls, but. Does all your kids' Somebody, friends? One of their friends, you yeah. know, there's always friends. Like, they see it. They're, they're going to find out everything. Yeah, so you might as well just tell them, like, hey. Yeah, Try dad, to educate them. Dad might smoke a little dope, all right? But you can't. <laughs> nope. Okay? That's just one that you live long enough, you'll be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead well, and keep that as a goal, all right? <laughs> keep that as a goal. Here's one. Live long enough to do that. And guess what? While we're doing it, guess what you can say? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck the fuck. Whenever yeah. we do. You got to live long enough to get to that point. Like, I think that is... I, and once again, I do not have a child. I have a dog that still shits inside, oh. okay? So I don't know if I'm... 
This is all theory. This is all theoretical stuff, but it's honestly how I feel. There's no right or wrong way, though. There's no, like, black or white way. Hey, this is the correct way to be a parent, and this is not. Like, no, there's absolutely not. Like, every situation, Pat, is very situational when it comes to kids. Nailed it! Wow. Let's get to a break on that note. Sad. We got some, uh, what's that? Is, it, is he playing or not playing? Oh, shit. Pause. Because this is kind of news, but... Jarvis Landry has been in the news the past couple of days. They said it's going to be week to week with an injury or whatever. It has now come out that he is going to the IR. Damn. The Browns have placed wide receiver Jarvis Landry on injured reserve with an MCL sprain, reports Ian Rappaport at Rap Sheet. So Jarvis Landry, who's one of the most durable, tough guys that the Cleveland Browns have, is now injured with an MCL sprain in his knee. He's placed on IR, which means he will be able to return after three weeks? Yes, Please, so. missed three mm -hmm. games. Yep. So he misses at least three games and they're able to move the roster around whenever they place him on IR. This is a damn shame. Jarvis Landry is a dude. He was the only one playing, it felt like, a couple weeks ago for Baker. He got the ball like 400 times, it felt like. Absolute stud. I think he's the emotional leader for the Browns. They got a good thing cooking over there. Jarvis will hopefully be able to get healthy here in the next three, four weeks and come back even better. I, that's why I like the new IR rules, where he can go on IR for three weeks and then we'll see. He's not out for the year. I, yeah, it's terrible that he has to leave, but for... If you're a Browns fan, I'd also be relieved a little bit. Hey, it's not an ACL; it's just MCL sprain. You can you rest that he doesn't probably doesn't isn't getting surgery right now for it. And you can come back from there, and hopefully you're healthy when the season really matters. Just a couple years ago, you hear IR that guy's gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and then COVID came through, and the injured reserve came became like the DL, right? Is yeah. that what the DL is in yeah, baseball? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. What We're, is the DL? Well, it's 15. like the, yeah, they can designate guys for like 15, 30, yeah, 45, 60. 60 days. Like so it, it's it's like a running scale pretty much. And I am happy that the NFL is doing this and I think all the teams were happy with it. I think a lot of people wanted to try it and COVID kind of gave the NFL an excuse to do it because hey, we need more players. We need to be able to rotate the roster especially with the testing and everything like that. So they upped the practice squad last year. They get rid of the IR. I think this is brilliant. I hope Jarvis comes back healthy. Cannot wait to see him. Bummed about it, by the way. Absolutely bummed because I love watching Jarvis Landry play football. Yeah. yeah. Love watching him play football. There's a stud. There's a guy that will. Hey, oh, yeah. you. he cares. You can tell he cares about what he's doing. Bingo. That's great coaching point and a great parenting point that I wish Ian Rappaport would have said to his kid instead of, why are they being arrogant out there? Well, they're not. They're proud. They're proud and they're happy with what they accomplished. And if you ever accomplish, a catch like that in the NFL on a Sunday, you could do the same thing. That's Until right. then, you keep your ass quiet and go to work. That's good parent. Son. Please. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. <laughs> Gotta assume OBJ's probably coming back now with uh, them being a little depleted at wide Willie? receiver. I mean. What's that all about? Jesus. If he's healthy, he will. Yeah, if he's 100% healthy, he will. Why, why would you bring a Ferrari out of the garage if the Fer you're winning, you're doing well, and the Ferrari, well, and the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the, they're good, they're doing yeah. good. Yeah. Right, they're good. One on one. Right. Right. And the, for why would you come, if the Ferrari still had a little tune up that needed to happen, why would you even bring it out to the race? Let that thing get all the way ready, get that tune up all the way in, and let that thing, the ponies hit once the green light comes. That's what the Browns are thinking with OBJ, pal. I saw Adrian Peterson come back in six months and win an MVP. <laughs> That was, that, that was insane. I mean, he rushed for more yards than anybody in the history in the quickest time after an ACL in the history of ACLs and ACL surgeries. Adrian Pearson, though, he's still running sprints right now. Yeah. Who's he playing for? Nobody. I don't think anybody yeah. yet. He's ready, though. Still out there. Niners. Maybe the Niners. Yeah. What did he tell yeah. us? He said when he Jeez. starts losing these races to these younger guys, maybe he'll start retiring or he'll think about retirement when i can't keep up or something like that and he's still just smoking he he has this um vertical uh not vertical incline treadmill no it's great like he has like a hill i think that they were running on this off season that had like fake turf on it i think it was like built like with wood damn it was sprinting up this thing it was he was in front of two young he posted it he was mm -hmm. he was in the lead and there was two younger guys behind him <laughs> and i think the quote was like still got it or something I'm like yeah. god damn right you still got it ap i can't wait to see who signs all day just like sherman's still out there yeah uh -huh. who's gonna sign richard sherman how's that gonna go i mean there's a lot of conversation to be had as this season unfolds we'll chat with somebody on the five hour energy phone line on the other side at one eight three three four McAfee. Please make it you. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. AJ Hawk, myself, the Hammer Down Boys in the Toxic Table. We'll see you in four minutes on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 21st. All the hard work 
throughout my entire life, whether it was driving me to practice, to go to work, the coaches that invested hours in me, everything I have done to get to this point. I got a whole town, a community, a family, a tribe of people watching me potentially live out my dreams that we all thought was gonna happen. And when I get to Rock, I get a chance to carry eight motherfuckers that are playing for a team that is in the city yeah. that I went to college in. I carry eight people, have the biggest moment in my football career, maybe make a team, if not with the Colts somewhere else. Hey, that guy's got juice, let's do it. Change the entire direction in the course of my family's life. <laughs> I can't be excited though. No. Nope. Don't even think Don't about it. Don't you fucking dare. Are you kidding me? Are you? All that just happened and everything I just said there and more is potentially happening in that one play. Don't even fucking think. It. Get your fucking ass back in the huddle. You know Barry Sanders? Hey, Barry Sanders, he, he'd score a touchdown and he would just hand it to the ref and he was gone. Hey, why don't I? Well, Barry Sanders also won the Heisman, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was also like the all time leading <laughs> scorer in this whole thing. Barry Sanders was unbelievable, worked his ass off. Let's not get crazy. And Barry Sanders had the ability to act like he had been there before because Barry Sanders, by the way, had fucking been there before. <laughs> and maybe Barry Sanders, the way he goes about business, isn't how everybody goes about business. Maybe there's a lot of different stories, a lot of different situations, a lot of different life events that lead to somebody acting differently than somebody that just acted, you know, almost robotic while being one of the most exciting and electric players in the history. Got nothing but love for Barry Sanders. Let's not get crazy. But there's a lot of people tweeting, act like you've been there before. It's like, you think this motherfucker's been there before? He hasn't. <laughs> this dude just carried eight people and maybe changed the entire life. He can't be excited. Aren't we a game of emotion? Aren't we a game of excitement? Why is this a fucking penalty? Hey, Goodell! Hey, eat your M&Ms! sitting on the chair, being cool. You became my commissioner. You weren't, you weren't my commissioner when, hey, you dance, you're fucking out. Your sock slide, you're fucking out. We don't want anything. We want robots, no emotion. Everybody hated you then, Raj, all right? Everybody hated you. And nobody understood why you're trying to take the fun out of the game. You're doing it because you want to be able to just pluck in play. You didn't want to have to have players be brand names because then you could replace them easily. Okay, I understand the business side of it, but we all agreed. The tribe has spoken that the game's better when people are excited. Some things are too much. All right, some things are way too much. There's, there were some dances that happened that looked a little bit more like basketball, where we're all like, there's no way that can happen with a full line dance. We get it, there was some. But it added to the game. The excitement added to everything. Now taking away this and making it a point of emphasis. And I'm not saying that there should be egregious, if something egregious happens, they should penalize them. Yes, please, it's not for the good of our game, not for the good of the league, not good for fans, not good for anybody. I understand that's gonna happen, but a point of emphasis means, hey, we're cracking down on this because we don't want it to happen anymore. And why are we targeting that as opposed to targeting something else I'll never understand. My commissioner, Roger Goodell, is gonna get to the bottom of this if Sam Ocho doesn't do it first. Yeah. Well, show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 21st. SeatGeek is the sponsor of today's show and they're running a special that they have never done before this time they were running this special. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's almost like Business suicide at this point. Oh, wow. no. Be careful. Yeah. SeatGeek survived the incredibly devastating world stoppage that shut down, obviously, all live events, all of our lives, everything like that. SeatGeek survived and came out the other side with a new logo, a new motto, and a successful business because that's what they've been since day one. One and right now, if you go to the link in the description of this youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show, 
video. Yes. Right. You can get 15% off all football tickets. Holy shit. Really? All football You want to go to a D3 game and they got the tickets for it? They get 15% off. You want to go D2, D1, what? NAIA. What? You want to go what? to an NFL game. What? You want to go to any football game that they have tickets for. It is 15% off, up to $50 off. Uh, whether you're a first-time buyer or not, this is available for everybody. Wow. No code. Just click the link in the description below and uh, automatically be accounted for or auto-applied to your account. 15% off. Um, that's beautiful. It's that incredible is incredible deal. Go, SeatGeek. Shout out to SeatGeek. 15% off is a beautiful thing. Nick got a chance to experience it this past oh. weekend when he went to the Steeler game down hey. there in Heinz Field. Hey. How was it to be back inside a, in, at a live event? It was amazing. 65,000 people, drunk off their asses, screaming, guy pooped his pants. What a place to be. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's not just about the pooping of the pants in the bathroom that you could potentially walk in on in numerous cities, not just Pittsburgh. Okay, well, uh, much higher chance probably in Pittsburgh. but Any real football city, you'll yeah, find that. Yeah, any good oh, yeah. tailgate city, you'll be able to find that. But it's it's about being a part of something. You know, you're a Labrador, you live and go live and experience something live. Now, keep your head on a swivel out there. There might be some fights, obviously. Yeah, sure. But it's At nice. the trough. Do they still have trough oh, there yeah. that you pee in? Oh, oh. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. Big sinks. Who was that? Cleveland? Was that Chicago or Cleveland? Where Cubs person? have it still. Oh, the one they did the, the slip and slide in it? Yeah. Oh, that's probably Cleveland, but yeah. Probably Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Sounds like somebody from Chicago would say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember if it was Chicago or Cleveland, but you don't need to do that, but you can get 15% off right now from our friends at SeatGeek. Let's go to the 5 RNG phone line. AJ Hawk. Uh, hey, let's... Baker should do that in his progressive commercial. You know, he's always at the stadium. He should do a straight slip and slide through the, the uh, trough. Is that still his house, or is it? Is are they still doing a stadium? Yeah, yeah. Home? There's, there's four ones. Yeah. There's four ones this year. I saw the book, re the book club one. I think they had a book club. Uh -huh. Yep. Garage yeah. sale, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. A Baker's staring down a lucrative acting career yeah. whenever he's done. We heard it about Gronkowski when he mm -hmm. was thinking about retiring. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think we're all staring at it here with old Baker Mayfield. Hulu, too. A lot of Hulu. He's been crushing it. The difference between those two, Baker is actually a good actor. Oh, shit. Tony. Tony. Wow. That was, there was no reason for that. Who are you talking about? Tony. That's Western Pennsylvania's own. By the way, Rob Gronkowski. No, 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 he's not. Yeah, he is. He may have went there for high school, but that's because he got kicked out of Buffalo. Oh. For doing something hilarious. It, it, I mean, it, I don't know if the full story has come out. I've heard the full story, and I'm not going to be the one that breaks the news for what it was. It was hilarious. He went to double U, double O, D Y, Woody, Woody High. High. Okay, same high school as old Sally McAfee. Wow. Uh, and he graduated. It's a great school. Great school. Football school. They are a dominant place. But I love Gronk. What was that all about? There I was a, him on the football field, for sure. There was a commercial last night for the new... <laughs> Uh, Venom movie with Tom Hardy and George Kittle was in it, and a lot of people online were saying George Kittle much better actor than Gronk. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, are, Kittle do is, we know? Have we seen? Kittle's Gronk? a good actor. I Kittle's yeah. charismatic. He's you know Kirk's dog. I mean he he knows what he's doing. He's Gronk? not a Hawkeye. He could fucking go you know light up the silver screen right now. Well, I saw Gronk also for eight hours refused to jump off of a six foot platform. Oh. <laughs> Tony. Tony. Wait, what, what are you talking about? That was a twenty or fifteen twenty. Forget out of here. Dang. I, I mean you, I can't. Jesus. believe that is what made Vince you just at 80 years old did it with no question he did a backflip all right he's talking about when vince mcmahon <laughs> did God. have to jump off of a platform that gronk who knew he was probably signing with the buccaneers at the time as he was host of wrestlemania down there in tampa bay <laughs> that was an interesting moment i mean some people are scared of heights though what do you want to do like what if he has a crippling fear of heights what do you want him to do those are scary yeah, but that was like up. jumping off like the top of a folding chair. <laughs> Not a, I mean, Todd, you know. come, on. come on. Like I said, I, I love watching Gronk play football on the football field. He is unbelievable. He is, he is. And he also doesn't watch any film, which I love. Did you hear that last night? I don't watch any film. I just run by guys. What a quote. What a legend, dude. It's awesome. Okay, like, hey, just you guys just tell me where to line up and where to run. I'll, I'll do the rest. And Peyton just probably mind blown by that because, <laughs> yeah. you know, Peyton was like, uber film study guy i assume tom brady is the same exact way but i like that rob just goes up to tom and goes hey what do i need to do this week just a couple things here no big deal all right you got it i'm becoming the greatest tight end of all time then i'm just going to continue not having to do anything that everybody else has to do i'm just going to be faster bigger uh have an insane catch radius have great hands and also have a quarterback to just watch his film for me and says oh gronk will be able to do this to this team and that's Unbelievable. Yeah, like would Dallas Clark watch film? I assume that Peyton would force those guys to get in the film room. I would assume, and that was what I did miss. I did miss that last night. I want. I wanted to ask him about Aaron, and I wanted to ask him uh, about. Did your head explode when you heard Rob Gronkowski say he watches no film? Like, have you ever been around anybody like that? Never. I don't think. I think. 
I, I, he might be the only guy that has ever reached that level that doesn't want – like, literally, I think so, AJ. I, he, that's a, he sees plenty of film, but it's what the coaches present him probably in his meeting. So that's the thing. It's tough on top of that, I'm, I'm sure, is what it sounds like. He doesn't watch anything on his own or at different times. Yeah, so his iPad, which can track how much film you watch at home. And this was a real change, you know, because when the iPad came, it was an iPad. I don't think yep. Microsoft. No, no. That's what I always said. They oh, Somehow all the teams give us iPads yeah, for our playbooks, but then you use this Microsoft Surface garbage on the sidelines. So what's this all about? So during can't the game? The surface, this Surface can't hold our, our playbooks? How's that work? And maybe we can get used to what we'll have on a sideline, or are we just all in the understanding that, oh, this thing stinks, they just paid a lot of money, and we will <laughs> fuck over the players and the coaches on game day for what they actually use in the game because Apple, for whatever reason, won't get in the game because Apple knows that they can just sell a new iPhone to everybody and they don't have to do any of the marketing at all. And I've never used the Microsoft Surface. I've never actually had to use anything on the sideline. But I did. The iPad was very fascinating because when that got introduced, it was an accountability test for basically everybody. And uh, I loved when, you know, Chuck tried to hint at to people in the team meeting room, like, Listen, some people can see how much everybody's doing. Like, that was how he first laid it out, you know? And then as it got older, like, as we moved on, there were some players that made some key mistakes or whatever. And Chuck just got to the point where he was like, we can see that you watch no film. Like, we, we know you have no idea what you're doing. Literally, we see what everybody's doing. We see what everybody's doing. So then guys started just playing it through and turning off the sleeper. And it's like, well, they, I think they could see that as well. I, uh -huh. I'm not 100% sure you can game the entire system. Well, and if you're not like a guy like Gronk, like you can't do that, right? Because you'll just be gone. Like if you're not watching film and then you stink on the field, it's like, okay, well, th this guy's not going to be around very long. Be who you can afford to be. Yeah, exactly. I, I assume those first couple weeks where Gronk was trying to get back into game shape down there with Tampa, Clyde Christensen... Guys watching no film, right? 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 Mm. Guys, right? Right? And then BA's probably like, this motherfucker ain't even watching film or whatever. And Tom's like, this way. Yeah. Just wait. Literally, he was just chilling. He was at some beach party a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That had an unbelievable run. You know what else did? There was another game on there. Flappy Bird. You remember oh, Flappy Bird? Oh, yeah. Sued by Mario Bro. T Tap. Nintendo. <clears throat> did it really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had to take him out. Because it's the, on your phone? Because the yeah. green thing. Yeah, it's yeah. an ADD game. You. I don't know why I've never gotten into any games on my phone. I just can't. I don't know. Fingers because your fingers are fucking mangled. mangled. Yeah, you can't There's a good, the good possibility that you're right there. I'm pretty good at texting. There's a lot of precision no, to that. I think you do voice to text, too. I can tell by the way some of the shit's no, spelled. No. <laughs> but it's probably pretty difficult for you to do that uh, yeah. flappy bird when you oh, don't yeah. know. Because your fingerprint ain't ever on it. It's like, does it work with a nail? No, it doesn't. You got to get that thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go through eight <laughs> iPhones a week. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Eight iPhones a week with your mangled claw. Let's go to the five-hour energy phone line here. I play on planes. They don't have any Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. only thing I do. Which is very tough to get Wi-Fi on an airplane. We're on a plane. <laughs> this last plane we were on. <laughs> Top notch. Best one we've ever seen. No. Best one I've yeah. ever been on. Really? Yeah. Wow. The Wi-Fi. We were streaming the YouTube. Yeah, we were. Whenever we got it, we were just streaming Damn. the video. Yeah, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It's quiet in there, too. Wow. I mean, when you're flying private. <laughs> Better than Mr. Ursay's? No. Uh, it's a little bit larger, Mr. <laughs> anyway, let's go to uh, Let's go to Dylan in the Bay Area. What's going on, Dylan? How you doing, Pat? Thanks for having me on, man. I just want to start off with a huge congratulations uh, for that uh, Manning cast. It was awesome, man. You are super entertaining. Oh. Also, just want to say last thing, uh, shout out Evan Foxy, bro. Go Lions. Love to see uh, yeah. some representation on a national Still, show. Pretty rare. Nice. Um, all I, pretty <laughs> much all I have to ask for you is basically, you know, it's kind of a shit show being a Lions fan. You hear about Calvin Johnson every week. Oh. Everyone's throwing Stafford in our face. Oh. I just want to hear, like, a nice, positive five minutes. Maybe there's a something good about five, five minutes, man. Dylan. You Jeez. fucking selfish Jeez. brick. What's Dylan. this all about? Dylan. You can go for ten. Go for doing? ten. Dylan. I'll say one positive thing real quick. Offensive line looked great last night. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Offensive line looked great. Andre yeah. Swift had a killer game. Hey, like MCDC's oh, Andre's in great shape too. Oh, yeah, I was about to say MCDC has some real vascularity. Yeah, yeah big time. Yeah, he's joked. We were being nice too. Yeah, I thought we were yeah. being real nice. Yeah. He, he did one five minutes. That's a lot of time, pal. I mean, Packers D line. Uh -oh. mm, I mean, hey, look, the Lions have a good old. So we're doing five there. good minutes here. Yeah, come on, yeah man, I know. Dude. They fought hard, man. They did, man. They, they did, fought man. so fucking hard. Man, we played in Lambo. It's tough to win out there, man. 
I remember. <laughs> Shit, you see our fucking defense? Rodgers did whatever the fuck he wanted to do, man. Hey, Coach, why'd you go uh, from cover two down to man, like, on the most important play there? And that really kind of sealed the entire deal, it felt like. You know what? I just looked into Aaron's eyes, and I said, you know what, man? If we're going to lose, you're going to have to beat me, man. And uh, he did. <laughs> and we lost. But I, I love these guys, man. They fight so hard, man. And see, we love MCDC. There's another good minute and a half. Boom. Right yes. We Boom. fucking love that guy. But I think listening to what Peyton had to say, about the team last night, you know how their their verbiage is retool. I think whenever we were the 32nd ranked team after we drafted Andrew Luck, our verbiage was reload. Okay, it's not a rebuild. It's a reload. It's a retool. Whatever the case is, it looks like it's going to be probably some losses this year. Yeah, it will be. We're the second youngest team in the NFL, though. Future's bright. O-line looks great. Mm -hmm. How's Golf the salary cap? Good. How's the salary cap? I think Assume we have well. a lot of space. Goff. Well, they're Contract. paying golf, what, $65 million a year? Yeah. yeah. What are we so, talking about? I think about? we're on the hook this year and next year from what everyone said on Twitter. So we'll find out. All right, let's go to Stan. There's two and a half good minutes, Dylan. We appreciate that call. Oh, yeah. Let's go to Stan. I don't even know. Hey, their the offense ball. looked great in the first the first half. I'd say their offense uh -huh. looked solid. Oh, yeah. Look great. Look great. That's hey, the Lions do. Let's go Lions. Be a part of the prize. Tons of time. Golf just dancing around there, buying time and hitting dudes down the field. Hey, yeah. how about him running? Yeah. How about yeah. Golf getting loose out there running yeah. the 5 2 Burners. 40? I mean, that was awesome, was dude. Moving. How about Peyton saying he hasn't run time 40 since 1992? <laughs> 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 Running downhill. Uh, downwind and <laughs> yeah. downhill. Uh, Steven in Kentucky, what's going on? They probably did, by the way, to set that up for <laughs> yeah. recruiting, for sure. Tennessee, yeah. hey, go run the side yard. There's a little bit of a, a downgrade right there. Just go ahead and let that thing go. Right. Let's wait for a day where that wind is going, too. I'll time it. Steven in Kentucky, <laughs> what's going on, dude? Happy Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays, boys. Oh, yeah. Shout out to AJ and the boys. Shout out. Hey, Shout excellent out. job Shout last out. night, Pat, on the show. That was the best. You were the best I've had so far. That's very it's nice of you. Didn't give that. It's very nice of you. Thing they didn't See what we're doing right here. Let's we're see doing if you right say it at the end of the year, sir. Hey, well, yeah, exactly. There's going to be a lot of guests, but also what we're doing right here, like, <laughs> if I didn't do this every single day, like, I think anybody that's going in there that isn't on something every single day, I think it's going to be tough because you don't want to step on somebody, but immediately upon stepping off and then stepping back on somebody, you're both stepping on each other at the same time. So, like, there was a couple of those moments with us last night. That's going to happen, though, I think, with a lot of people who aren't necessarily, like, live every single well, day. Well, there's that moment with Peyton and Favre where they just kept doing it. Peyton was like, we keep stepping on each other. I'll just, uh, and then just, just cut him off and kept going. I think that's going to happen. But I appreciate that, you, Steve. Hey, that one, just Pat, talk, that one went like four times more than I thought it was going to. Well, you, hello, do you go, hello, you, whoop, and you Peyton almost exploded. Yeah. Well, towards yeah. the end of Gronk, too. He threw to Gronk, and Gronk was just not paying attention anymore. <laughs> Uh, Steven in Kentucky, what do you got, pal? Sorry about that. Thank you for the compliment, though. That means a lot. But I think literally I was the only person that had, you know, any kind of comfort in that particular hellacious tech setup with three people with lags and everything like that. They do a great job over there, though, making it as easy as possible. But it's a tough thing to do on a daily basis. What's going on, Steven? Well, it's a good thing AJ's internet curse didn't follow you. But hey, we got oh. we've got overreaction Monday. We've got Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. We got coach him up Chuck Wednesdays. Right. You know, and feel good Fridays. What are we thinking about for Thursdays? Maybe Aaron Andrews Thursdays or Matt Castle Thursdays. Oh. Castle. 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 Thought hey, it was Thursday. Ca Thursday. Yeah, it's beautiful Thursday. It's Thursday night Thursdays, dude. Thursday yeah. night football Thursdays. Come on. Hey, Aaron Andrews Thursdays would be eat hashtag e a t. Yep. You know, I, I don't. I don't know if she's being serious either. I think she was just being nice or whatever, you yeah. know. Hey, let's do this again. You know, one of those things right. or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's so good to see you. We do got some things to figure out as the show goes on. We got a long season, though, no, Steven, and I appreciate the compliment. Uh, one final breaking news here before this hour ends, before Aaron Rodgers Tuesday begins on the other side of a six minute break in the third hour. Allegedly, the Superdome is currently on fire right now. Uh, at Overtime is reporting via a video from Johnny underscore Pawnee, old Johnny Pawnee on the spotty. Well, well, that's not good. Superdome is on fire. There is black smoke coming from one side of the Superdome there, which I believe is now the Caesars Superdome. Mm -hmm. um, it might. It looks like tire fire. I mean, anytime you got black smoke, you got some bad things going on in there. Obviously, very scary situation. Hope everything's okay. And I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how far it has spread. But hopefully, the New Orleans Fire Department is able to put that out with the quickness. AJ Hawk. 
Yeah, I mean, if they can get it out, it, it can limit the damage. But, man, think how high up that is. You're going to be on crane spraying that. you got to yeah. spray it from the inside up. Like, There's another angle. It looks pretty big. Yes, the fire does, not from yeah. just Johnny Pawnee's side yeah, here. Yeah, the fire does. Okay, we hope everybody's okay down in Superdome. Superdome is obviously a legendary place, not just for football, but also for life and everything that happens down in the Gulf Coast area. So nothing but T's and P's to the fire. And thank you to the firemen and fire ladies and the firefighters that are going to go out there and battle that thing because that looks a little bit... Hot as fuck. Yeah. yeah, not good. Do we know when they're supposed to be back in New Orleans? After the, the, after the Patriots game, I believe. Yeah, I thought I next week. Be. I wonder how, is that like a suite up there that's on fire? Like, that's that a, looks like it's in the scaffolding. Like ventilation yeah. or something. It's pretty open, though, I think. They've been it? without power, so maybe they, f- they flip that switch back on. and <laughs> something, something. A little spark. Yeah. yeah. Not good. Not great. That's scary. Scary. Hope everybody's okay down there. T's and P's. Good luck fighting that thing, firefighters. You know, you need to take a hose. Jeez, there's one guy oh, with a hose shit. up there. Is that oh, a human up that? there? That's, That's a guy good. with a hose. No Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, he's fighting it. He's. I mean, he's, he's got a long fight, it Jesus. looks like. I, I'm not so a did he pop up at the top of the dome and then tie off and probably. walk down there? So they probably have something that gets you up onto the roof oh that only a couple people know. I want to let you know, that person that's standing up there deciding to fight against that fire, I appreciate the hell out of them. Hell yeah. They have a confidence about them that we need to see out of a lot of people. Somebody's going to have to start fighting this thing. It'll be me. Let's hope the fire department shows up sooner than later down there. T's and P's, everybody down to Superdome. Hour three is on the other side with Aaron Rodgers yeah. joining us fresh off of his 18-point victory over the Detroit Lions on Monday Night Football. We'll see you in six minutes. Cheers. Every Tuesday, this football season, joining us, Aaron Rodgers. Every Tuesday. We hold. That doesn't get you going for a game? Are you kidding me? No, but I have a funny Creed story. So, 2007, we're playing the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday night. Oh, that was- one. I have long hair, and I'm a backup. And before the game, we walked down the field, and I don't know if it was on purpose, but our intro song was Creed with Arms Wide Open. I looked to my buddy Nate Weir, and we both said, this is going to be a good night. And that was the night I came in mm-hmm. off the bench and changed the narrative about me from, you know, possible draft bust oh, to, shit. hey, this guy might be able to play, maybe. Thank you, Creed. Yeah! Thank you, Scott Creed. Why am I having so much fun? Bingo. I have just a new and increased love of life and i've made decisions and changes and habits that put me in a lot better headspace and there's just a lot of things that have come together in my life over the last few months and it starts with love and then surround yourself with with people that you really enjoy you know to to get sentimental this show is is just another step in that what is the longest you've ever thrown do you even know that number or do you not care yeah somewhere between 68 and 70 pat i don't know right in that sweet spot (laughs) oh 69 yards is how far you threw it nice congrats i sometimes laugh when people talk about you know down years for me because a lot of times down years for me are career years for most quarterbacks That was awesome! You said in the interview that you would add an extra finger to your scotch drink or whatever. It was a long night. We didn't get home. I didn't get home till like 11.40. Look at how much scotch that is. Is that what you did? (laughs) It's not that much. That's four fingers, dude. You said you normally do three. That's four right there. But you have those fat sausages. (laughs) Why is football the greatest sport on earth? One main reason. It is a true team sport. The love is not just about our sport. It's about competition. I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have by competition. Yeah, they wouldn't show it because I uh, play for the Packers, but um, I had a pretty sweet no-looker to Devontae <laughs> on the last drive that kind of set up for a few plays. I'm so thankful Patrick Mahomes brought that into the NFL. I know. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Good for him. Yeah, I know. It's just none of us been doing for probably doesn't get anywhere near the credit for doing shit like that all the time. Uh, he wears number nine and plays in Detroit. There's a massive water pipe out there with vitamins, and I've been going pretty ham at that. Maybe that is the problem. <laughs> hey, guys, it's a plant, bro. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's it. A couple people, one college kid, took a shot of my swag. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, we know. Oh, we know. We don't I like don't that kid. Like you know, swag It's just like the clothes I wear or whatever. No, no, no. A swag is a mentality. Yeah. Swag is a mindset. Wagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. True swag 
is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys are just posers. <laughs> I am very thankful for you guys, for this show, for the opportunity to have this Tuesday. I'm not going to say that it's the reason why we've played so well and I've had uh, a good season, but I can definitely say that it's been a positive contributor in the entire year, and I, I do have a lot of thanks and, and, and gratitude for that. Aaron, thank you, Aaron. Thank no, you. no, no, no. Don't, don't no, you no, thank no. us. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you on here. I feel like I've learned so much about not only you, but life and football. Do you have any hilarious interactions with fans? Anybody ever say something just absolutely despicable to you? There's been a bunch over the years. I think the, the rowdiest and the biggest trash talkers and the funniest trash talk talkers are in Philly. Oh, yeah, uh, me too. You know, one of my idols growing up was Alex Trebek. They're doing some uh, some guest hosting spots, and it's going to be released here pretty soon, but I have the opportunity to do one of those. Let's oh. go! I am so thankful you joined us, man. The mustache looks incredible, and the fact you're wearing that shirt, I am eternally grateful for, pal. Well, yeah, we might as well drop some bombs on this show. You know? There's no scrubs out there. <laughs> have you watched a film on the game yet? You, will you watch no. the film? Yeah, I think like uh, 4.20 on uh, Saturday, probably. <laughs> P.M. Central time. Were you at all surprised to see the the wild speculation out there after your uh, post-game comments? I don't feel like I said anything that I hadn't said before. It, just, it was more a, real, a realization, I think. Ultimately, my future is, is not necessarily in my control. Now, obviously, after the season that I had, and you know, potentially winning an MVP, you know, we That's obviously fun. made it uh, another good run. I don't think that there's any reason why I wouldn't be back. I don't think people are used to hearing the truth from athletes. So when they hear the truth, it's so like surprising at times. That's why this show, I think, has been so different. There's times where you let your mind go to maybe, well, I'm going to be a Packer for life. I'm, I'm going to be like a Tim Duncan or a Jeter or a Kobe and play with one team my entire career. I think naturally you dream about that. I think I've realized this year with the conversations, you do seem to be a rather normal human. And you guys know, we've talked about this off, off air, but there wasn't like some agenda doing this. It was like fucking talk to Pat and AJ every week? Yeah. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but what it's allowed me to do is, I think, silence all the douchebags out there who were, you know, talking for me. You know what? I'll say it. What? Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is happening. Yeah! yeah! The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour three on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, with Aaron Rodgers begins immediately after that beat drop. Yeah. Yeah. AJ Hawk is here from his attic wearing a Chuck Berry shirt. Obviously got it at Hot Topic. Shout out to him. The Hammer Don boys are here. The Toxic Table is here. Everybody's in the back. We have an update on a news break that we had before we went to the break. The Superdome roof is on fire. Allegedly, it was due to a pressure washing situation where they were trying to set up to repaint it. I don't know what happened with the pressure washing situation on the roof, but it started a fire. There is smoke. It is big. Let's hope that thing gets handled down there. A AJ Hawk. I mean, is there a live? I would imagine someone streaming it, staying outside the Superdome for us, right? Uh, you know, Johnny Pawnee was down the road there. We saw his video first yep, from yep. the one side. There's going to be more and more, I think, coming out of there. Scary situation. Hope everybody's okay. Hope that fire doesn't spread. You know, you got to keep that mm -hmm. thing contained. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of fighting fires. And there was a guy up on the roof. We assume he was potentially the pressure washer that maybe led into this entire thing. I'm yeah. not sure. Hope everybody's okay. Joining us right now. He's a man who 
after the first week of this NFL season came on this show, was relaxed, was calm. He said, hey, listen, this ain't a big deal. Relax, everybody. We're going to be okay. And ladies and gentlemen, he showed up on Monday Night Football in a big way. Not only getting a win over the Detroit Lions in front of the beautiful, faithful cheeseheads at Lambeau, but also covering 11 and a half. Hell yeah. My fucking God. All the way back, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Ross. Yeah! What's going on, dude? I feel like at least one of you guys on the show didn't think we were going to cover. Is that right? Oh. 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 That, that was me. Was. Absolutely. I thought for sure they would score a touchdown at the end, which they almost did to help you guys not cover. But I said the whole time, you will win the game, and you did. Oh, way, right. to, way to go, AJ. Uh, I'm happy you heard that, though, because I thought it was a bit treasonous as well. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, I, I thought it was a bit treasonous as well out of this guy. That's all good. I love AJ, and, and at least he texts me back this week. It's, you know, it's a rarity, so. Oh, oh, that is a real thing. I have trouble with that, too. And he's got to go play in the Ryder Cup right now. He won't even be at work the next four days, just like last week where he's at some yuppie event, eh, right? Two days. He's, yeah, he's definitely changing a lot. You know, he's seen AJ at one point tried to kind of hide is like the Homer Simpson, uh, you know, uh, gif where he kind of disappears into the bushes. He thought that was going to be AJ, and now he's out there. I mean, he's a big media guy. He does podcasts. Now he's a big golfer. Anything... You know, he's basically, you know, America's guest. Anybody that pays him, you know, <laughs> worth of worth of three fifty or maybe a fifty dollar subway gift card, he's gonna be there and then show up to your event. America's guest, A.J. Yeah. Hawk, a man who won a college football <laughs> national championship, a Super Bowl champion, and he's about to be a Ryder Cup champion somehow. This guy with mangled fingers who can barely hold a golf club. I'm very thankful for him, as I am for you, Aaron. Now, last night, let's get this thing started. Uh, going into the night, I think you felt like uh, felt pretty good about everything. The offense was very successful in the first half, didn't have much time on the field. Then second half, you really got going. Was there anything different last, or last night that you didn't feel last week, or was it just kind of an entire vibe going into Monday night, you think? Just halftime adjustments, Pat. Halftime adjustments. <laughs> we talked about that last week. We talked about that last week. Uh, so, you know, it, it was one of those disjointed first halves again. Like last week, we had really three possessions. We scored two, two touchdowns on those. So we felt good offensively about what we were doing. Uh, the biggest drive of the game is obviously coming out of the first half there, or second half and hitting Devontae, the kind of guys going. Um, you know, to, to have our first lead of the season finally change things. They came down, and we stopped them on fourth and one and went down and scored to go up two scores, and that's when everything, the game definitely changed from that point. So those those were the, the throw to tell you was probably the turning point in the game. Um, you know, hit Bobby later on the drive. Uh, but but that, that play was the, the, was the play the guys going. Hey, what about your throw to, uh, to Tunyon uh, up the seam for the touchdown? Peyton. Lost his mind. I was watching the old Peyton cast. Pat was on there. Um, that throw obviously seemed perfect. And his the linebacker's back was turned. Do you feel like if a guy's back or if his head is looking away, then it doesn't matter how tight he is. Like he's open, you can put it somewhere. Yeah, if I can see it, if I can see his numbers, I feel like that guy, our guy's open, just because it gives you a lot of different places to throw the football over the top, uh, back shoulder, kind of over the guys over the guy's shoulder if you want. You can put a little air on it at the safety. The safety is a little wide on the play. So I was really just looking at the release uh, the release of Bobby um, and then what the safety did. Uh, I had uh, Devante one-on-one backside. was really where I wanted to go pre-snap. Um, they were playing some two-show, but the safety wasn't necessarily getting a ton of width at the snap, um, even though they were playing outside leverage on Devante for, for much of the game in kind of a double. Um, but at the snap, the safety kind of moved slightly to his left, so then I looked to the front side to Bobby. And that safety stayed outside wide, uh, so I knew I had a good chance at uh, putting the ball um, on Bobby and you know, threw it kind of exactly where I was, where I was hoping to. Yeah, kind of. I mean, kind of exactly. Watching Peyton react to that ball, it was awesome because Peyton was a guy timing. Everything had to be exactly where or the routes had to be practiced, and you know that was like his thing, like, hey, I'm going to drop it in this bucket. Watching him react to that laser beam that you put the big Bob Tunyon was awesome. As you're throwing that ball, are you thinking to yourself, oh, there's like fucking three humans in the history of Earth that can make this throw that I'm about to do, right? Do you think about that, or is that not even in there? It's just like everybody's open because I can put it wherever the hell I want. Do you even think about that at all, or no? Uh, no, Pat, I don't think that there's only a few humans who can make this throw right before the throw. <laughs> uh, I might be thinking I've made this throw before, uh, which I have made those types of throws before. 
uh, but really it's about the release. You know, once I see the release and feel that uh, based on his uh, his body movements that he's going to be in the spot where I think he is, it's just a matter of putting the ball in a in a tight spot. But that's, you know, it's throws that we work on, throws I've hit over over the years. It just comes down to footwork. I said after the game, I don't feel like I was throwing the ball uh, often enough on rhythm in week one. And so that's what I was focusing on last week in practice. And, and that throw was this... Uh, three in the gun, you know, tight hitch uh, throw that, you know, when I, when I am in rhythm and on balance, those are throws I expect to make, you know, regardless of how tight the window is. Immediately after the game, you had an interview on the field talking about the Lions defense and what happened in the first half, second half, and everything like that. As we were watching the Manning cast, Peyton and Eli, all they were talking about is, oh, they're in cover two. They are just daring Aaron to run the ball. They're they're saying that Aaron is going to get bored. Aaron's not going to be able to just be patient with this entire thing. That's what the defense is saying. And Peyton and Eli weren't saying that you were going to give in to the temptation, but he just thought that's what the defense is continuing to show. And then you got one-on-one with Devontae. You drop it in the bucket, then that Bob Tunyon thing comes immediately after. The, how hard is that to kind of sit back and just be like, all right, Aaron Jones, this is going to be a big-time night for you until we can open this thing up? Or is that just you just have to view it as, oh, this is this week's challenge in this whole thing? Well, I think it's the way the league is trending. The the trends on defense, the fads, uh, as we've seen over the years, have gone usually from you know split safety to single safety. And uh, split safety, when I first got in the league, single safety with uh, San Fran and Seattle's defense, um, Legion of, uh, of Boom, uh, for so many years. And, and then their coaches obviously branched off and went to a bunch of different places, and, and that became the... The, uh, the defense around the league, and now it's kind of this Rams defense, which is a lot uh, Rams Saints ish, a lot more combo coverages, too high, quarter on one side, quarters on one side, halves on the other, and you got to be patient with the run. Uh, so that's just the way it goes. We saw it back in 2011. I think we were really, really rolling. Very few teams wanted to play us in single safety, but when they when they do, you got to make them pay, and you have to have also stuff for the two high. The, the two high um, defenses you see as well. But on that third down, they rolled the one high kind of late, and Devontae had a one-on-one. I put him in a good spot. He made a great catch. Hey, what about their head coach, Dan Campbell? Do you have any good interactions with him, either pregame, postgame, and the rest of the staff? I mean, a lot of those guys have been players for a while. Do you get to chat with them? Unlike you, AJ, I like to wear my knee pads on my knees. So, you know, I feel like that was the first line. <laughs> what? Was that definitely that. Uh, but no, I didn't see him. I saw three of my former teammates who I love. Uh, Tim Boyle was back up for three years. Love Tim. He's an awesome guy. He broke his thumb. Uh, he's recovering, but he's a you know special, special guy. Jamal Williams who played with us for four years. Jamal, you know, you just can't replace that type of energy and that enthusiasm and love for the game. Not to mention he's a great player. And then uh, Gmo, Geronimo Allison, I saw him after the game as well. You know, just a guy who brought so much energy and excitement and enthusiasm to our team and in our locker room. Just a great human. Um, just fun to see those three guys for sure. Uh, when Jared Goff got loose last night, a couple of times Jared Goff got loose out there. One ran, one ran right into you, basically. How's that interaction go? Did you say, wow, surprisingly faster than I think everybody thought? Or would you tell him not to pull anything? Or how does that normally go when you're on other sidelines and when people come to your sideline? It just depends. Sometimes they're friendly, sometimes they're not. Uh, based on where we're at in the game, we're up by three scores. Jared's a cow guy, so I got to, you know, I'm repping my my Adam Duras County Crow shirt today. Oh, uh, of course. Of course. You don't know, you probably don't even know who Adam Duras is, but he's the lead singer. And oh. they're back on the tour. And Adam used to actually, uh, he would be singing the, the, uh, the, uh, the winning song in the locker room with us in college, so I got to got to know him a little bit. Um, anyway, Jared went to Cal. You know, there's in the locker uh, room with you, Mr. Jones. A, oh yeah, quite a lot of us in the league. Are you, just, are you just randomly naming? Can you name any any other song on August and everything after? Around uh, here, dude. Of course. Uh, a yeah, lone December. <laughs> You're in the right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Zito. Yeah. 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 Good job, guys. Yeah, thank but you. But no, I, he, he busted out a couple times. They ran a read option with him where he pulled it. Uh, he had a scramble. We had nobody visiting the football, and he ran for like 30 yards. I mean, that was – it's it's fun to see the, uh, you know, the, the slower – you watch – look, you watch uh, Lamar the other night, right? He's so dynamic. <laughs> 
it's it's unbelievable. Like the one run he had where he literally like went between jukes. It looked like Barry Sanders, and I grew up watching Barry Sanders. I love Barry Sanders. Look like him just making guys miss. For us, like slower, you know, white guys. Every time we bust off a run for like five yards, you know, I feel like man, I just you know. I had a couple last night where we had some holding on the defense, and I was like, make sure I get those rushing yards. I, mean, <laughs> I had six yards, I think, last night on four carries. Um, so I was I was a little jealous of Jared, for sure, but uh, but happy to see him, you know, bust out and get, get some rushing yards. Hey, when you catch him with 12 guys on the field, what is that? I know Peyton and Eli were trying to diagram a little bit. You Do you have a feel when they have too many and they're, they're trying to sub and they just have, like, a go-to, and all of a sudden you, you get to run a play? Yeah, it just depends on the on the substitution patterns. And it looked like you stopped Tunyon. You you signaled him to stay on the sideline. It looked like one one of them. Well, I think some of that's competitive advantage. So I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> on, it was on the game copy. I did a quick count, so uh, you know, I went to ten real quick on my hands, and then you know, one two on my forearm here. So it's like they got twelve. Let's let's get them. And luckily, I went to Old Faithful. Uh, Randall Cobb on, on two of those, actually, which is pretty cool. Um, talking about the sleeve, Peyton talked about this with Jared Goff at the beginning of the uh, game, and it's been fascinating to listen to them talk because I assume it is very similar to how you would watch a game and everything like that. He talked about how whenever you have that sleeve, uh, basically uh, you're getting relayed a number, and then like Goff's getting relayed a number, then he reads it. And normally when you know an offense, as soon as the play's coming in, he said he liked to visualize the play as it's coming in, then he reads it to the huddle, and then now, boom, we're all off and running. When you're reading it off your armband, it's just like you're not really getting a chance to visualize it until you're walking up to the line of scrimmage. You still have the armband on. Is that just something that you guys change and add weekly, or is that you got the offense is just so big you still have to have some reminders in there? And are you comfortable completely in this LaFleur system now, year three, obviously? I'm definitely more comfortable for sure, but I'll say this. The thing I loved about watching Peyton and Eli in the second half, uh, the first the first Monday night game, was damn near everything they said was the truth. You know, like was exactly how most quarterbacks think and, and watch games, you know. It, it was it was really, really fascinating. So I'm not sure what happened last night. I know, you know, your crazy ass was on there. Um and I'm sure you did, you know, where you were repping for the brand and probably talking to Indianapolis, this and that, and, you know, basically stealing the show. But I, I will say that, you know, when you have the wristband, it, it, it does make a big difference because the thing I used to always love was being able to hear the play, and as you're calling it, you are visualizing exactly what you want. And something's coming to mind, either a play from practice, a play from the film, uh, something you maybe visualized the night before during the week about how you wanted that play to play out. Um, when it, you're reading off the wristband, it is different because then that time changes – to that quick couple seconds when you do break the huddle, where usually when you're breaking the huddle, for me, you're thinking about adjustments to the play, stresses in the protection, or slight um, you know, uh, changes in, in routes you might want to make depending on the coverages. So it does change, I think, uh, that whole dynamic. However, we have to do it. It's not, it's necessity because plays in this offense are so long. You know, and in the old system, um, and, and even in college, if we had in college, if we had more than seven signals on a play, it would go to the wristband. Uh, with Mike, there were very few plays that we ever needed that, just because things were we would cut down on verbiage so much, and we're in the same system for so long, we just didn't necessarily need to have one. Um, in this system, we have to have it because there can be 15 words to a single play. Is and, it, are you still evolving in this offense? You think though, like still, you still have a lot of room to go, or do you think you have a pretty good grasp on it? Even though, like, like at this point, I have a good grasp on it for sure. I think the offense itself can evolve. It has to evolve. Every offense has to evolve. Uh, but I've got no, I've got a great grasp of it. But I need the wristband because if if one word gets cut out, or if he pushes the button too early before he starts talking, or whatever might happen, um, if one or two words are off. You know, and I say I need it again. Uh, then we're talking about another five seconds, and it just slows you down, uh, getting to the last scrimmage. So it's much easier to say, hey, you know, 22 or whatever, and or 22 flip, whatever it might be. Then you got to then those five underlined words on here. You got to flip. You know, right goes to left, protection one side goes to the other side, run one side goes to the other side, motion goes. To, you know, it's like it's it's gymnastics that it, it's uh, it takes a little bit of learning curve, but but we got it. No, you're just a dumb. 
Dumb jock, though. Remember that. Don't yeah. ever forget it. Go ahead, Ty. What do you have? Aaron, we've talked ad nauseum about how no matter what you do, there's always going to be detractors and people talking shit. And, it, I mean, it was like that this whole week leading up to the game. And then last night, even, you know, going into halftime, you're 11 to 13 or whatever with, you know, two touchdowns. You look great, and people are still picking apart and, tr- you know, trying to dance on your grave or whatever. And you alluded to it in your postgame presser how, like, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to respond, but, like, I, I see what everyone's been saying. Like, are there any people, like, at this point, do you know who's kind of in your corner? Like, do you ever see stuff, and it's like, oh, shit, I can't believe this guy's, you know, got something, uh, you know, some sort of issue with me and does it like piss you off you know like i saw a lot of people were saying that like you know you didn't care until the tanyan throw last night like that's when it clicked and it's like oh okay we can see he cares again like is it one of those things where that's still just outside noise and you don't give a shit or is it like what the fuck are these guys talking about i I tell you you know it's a combination of both i mean on one hand it's absolute horseshit to give a platform to people who have no idea what they're talking about as far as (laughs) my mental state and you know my focus my work habits people that have not been around me uh, they're not in my life i don't have communication with them or not in the locker room i mean that's that's just that's just it's chicken shit. you know it's it's so ridiculous that, that people give get a platform to do this and it's the same type of people on the flip side of that i think in this day and age of media the, the things that get the most, it's all about clicks, right? And hits and views and uh, one second counts as a view. So the, the actually opinions that are garnering the most attention are the most outlandish. So, so it's not even overreaction Monday or Tuesday anymore. It's overreaction every time a microphone's in your face. Every time you have a single shot in the camera and you get to talk to camera. Every time you're on a panel, it's who can say the most outlandish things uh, because that's going to give you the most hits that's the media we live in that's fine but at the same time i still you know i still have this show i have my weekly stuff i mean most people you know don't use their platform to defend themselves i don't think i need to defend myself and people who aren't worth spending time on but i'm always going to give a reminder that listen to the source you know of some of these things and 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 be reminded that it's often the same people in the same tired rhetoric i was just surprised after week one there was such a you know, uh, story out there, but to let, but what's crazy to me is to let one storyline, right, by a person who has no contact with me, has zero, uh, zero relationship, to that becomes some sort of like narrative that's out there, that that now I somehow don't care about ball because uh, because of my Zen attitude in the off season. That's the bullshit I was talking about last night. And, and I think that regardless of what happens this season or how we do moving forward, we have a tough schedule. There's going to be some ups and downs for sure. We're a team that's, you know, finding our identity slowly, as, as always happens throughout the year. But, like, the trolls are out there. I get it. But the truth and fact should not be replaced by uh, conjecture ill-founded conjecture and when it is then i'm thankful for this opportunity and for my pressers to be able to say hey look just think about who's saying these things Woo! Yeah! Yeah! hey that was a big fuck you i enjoyed that hey i want to let you know i enjoyed that there well articulated obviously you did the whole thing you did a state of the union almost in the world we live in but it needs to be said and i appreciate the hell out of that i'm sorry aj go ahead that was awesome that was a hey, great question, Ty. Great good question, Ty. Yeah. How has that changed, though, from when you got in the league till now? Has it changed? And how does it feel different from how the media is or how you guys interact with the media? It's way, it's way different age because I think all these people who are on these shows now believe they're celebrities and they believe that they have this platform to, you know, use it to say whatever the hell they want. And that's how they garner the attention. That's how they get promotions. That's how they get to be on multiple networks. That's how they, you know get their name out there and get a blue check mark and get to go to the Met ball and whatever the hell's going on. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, that's the society we're in now. It's when I first got in the league in 2005 and you got in there in 2006, I mean, social media wasn't a thing unless you had a MySpace and it was all about who was your top five or top 10 if they expanded it, what kind of music you had in the background. And it wasn't about, you know, your social media following, your likes, your, uh, you know, how many views on a page, uh, 
you know, I think it's it's different. It's it's all about uh, how many uh, impressions you can have for things that you say. So, what's gonna, you know, it's not gonna be the, you know, the relax. We're fine. This is one week. It was a dud. We're gonna bounce back. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't move the needle for anybody. But you start saying some outlandish things about. You know what I did in the off season, and me wanting to be on Jeopardy and not play ball, and all this other you know ridiculousness that Tom Fanning you know told me was out there, uh, which I really didn't see myself. Um, you know, I just think it's it's a, it's that's the state of the media that we're in. How about Tom, by the way? Tom from MySpace. He was oh, yeah. friend. He's a great photographer. Have you ever run into him in any of your adventures? I think he's like a world traveler photographer now. Our friend Tom. No, but I'm uh, a big fan. He was one of my first friends. <laughs> Me too, man. He never responded, though. I, I, I sent him really? a couple messages. Son of a bitch would never respond. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I love that you're are kind of addressing the state of the world. Can I, can I talk to you about right after the national anthem, there was a flyover. Was that the biggest fighter jet you've ever seen in your life? Was that thing a 53 and a third wide? And then that moment of you and Devontae dapping each other up made me very comfortable with everything I'd been saying about the team. It felt like the team had a different vibe going into that. So just a couple questions in one there. Was that the biggest jet you've ever seen to a flyover? And what was the vibe going into the game? Felt like you all were kind of on the same page, like last week was just a big fuckery here. I don't know if it was the biggest jet I've ever seen do a flyover, but it was it was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. To, to not have that for a year and not have the fans and the energy. Um, th there's something that always gets me, uh, regardless of how I'm feeling, physically, mentally, but intros. And it was defensive intros last night, so I didn't get the run out there. But um, the juice that you get and the electricity that goes through your body when you're introduced – it just it's it changes the whole dynamic uh, inside your body, and I think we kind of needed that uh, as a team, that energy from the crowd last night um, to kind of get us going. It wasn't that we weren't confident; it was just I think we needed to just prove to ourselves again. And, and this might sound like a, a crazy statement, but I, I do believe this. I think you need to learn how to win every single year again, and then nothing carries over from year to year. There's there's mindset, there's a culture, there's environment. I think that. The structure that's carried over, but the team is different. And I think each team needs to relearn how to win and how to deal with adversity every season. And we didn't do, handle it well the first week. And, and uh, yesterday we handled it well. We came in a locker room. There wasn't a freak out. I think we all kind of realized, look, we had three possessions. We scored on two of them. Let's take the lead for the first time this season. Let's play from a lead. Let's get a couple stops and we'll be fine. And so I, I am proud of our guys uh, in that respect because I feel like we – um, we just kind of stuck together. And as far as the confidence-wise with Devontae, I mean, how do you not have confidence? I told him this last night in the bench, and I really believe this. Um, as great as he was last year, and he was spectacular, I think he's a better player this year. I really do. I mean, you look at uh, – I was just watching uh, uh, the clip of his first catch of the night last night. He literally ran a stick route. He ran five yards and stopped, and I threw it to him. The back group flew over the top. And he turned up field, and nobody touched him. And he went – 12 yards after the catch it was a 17 yard play and i was just like you know and then you add on the catch that he had when i threw it super high with the middle that he made and just you know down the sidelines he just makes it look so easy and you know he retorted to me last night he said we're just getting started and <laughs> well I, I think ty schmidt actually just you know <laughs> there's a little uh, yeah there's a little uh there's a little yeah. frosting that just came out over there. That was Changed great. my underwear. I, I heard Andrew Luck tell T. Y. Hilton one time, and I think I was, I was probably eavesdropping in this conversation. But the way they they liked playing football with each other, like that was something like, "Hey, I like playing football with you," and they had this incredible connection, you know. And I think Tom Brady has that with Gronk. Is that how you feel with Devontae? Like you just enjoy playing? Not that you don't with everybody else, but it, I feel like there's a special connection that comes between some of those relationships between quarterback and wide receiver. And in the end, it's like, I like playing football with you. Like, it's a lot of fun doing that. Well, how can you not? I mean, the guy makes you look great every single week. So how can you not? Um, I care so much, you know, as opposed to what was said last week. I do care so much. But I care so much about uh, about the people, you know, about about the person and not just the player. 
And when I see uh, a guy growing as a person, it, I mean, 99% of the time translates to a guy growing on the field. And Mike used to say this all the time uh, when he was in Green Bay. He used to say, your best players got to be your best people. And when you do that, you can create a culture of player-led team and, and leadership uh, in the right way, authentic leadership. And I'm as thankful as I am to, to throw it to 17 every single week. I'm just as thankful about the type of guy that he is and the way that he leads, the way he conducts himself, the type of professional that he is, uh, just his whole uh, countenance and uh, demeanor and charisma. You know, that to me is what it's all about, a superstar player who can do all those other things and, and is a good person. And, you know, for that, I'm, I'm obviously really thankful for, for DA. You guys are pretty good. You guys pretty hey, good. <laughs> how important is it for you guys to like each other, for teams and locker rooms to actually get along and hang out off the field and do all of that? You can't put a stat on it, but Pat and I talk all the time, like, hey, the best teams love being around each other and hanging out on and off the field. Yeah, you know, we used to we used to say back in 2010, uh, the team that drinks together wins together. Yeah, yep, yep. And that team, that team got after it for sure. <laughs> we hung yeah. out more than in most other other years, don't you think? That year, I 100 percent agree with that. And it was the personalities, though. It's it's you know you you bring together a Josh Sitton and a TJ Lang as young players. You know Brian Balaga as a rookie. And you got the old heads, you know, Cliffy and Tausch and Driver and Woodson and the young up and, up and coming guys like Greg Jennings and Jordy Nelson and James Jones. And just the way that we all vibed together uh, was really special. Then you add the wild cards like Tom Crabtree. Uh, you know, you got those glue guys, Howard Green, I think about, uh, BJ Raji, you know, the first half. The first yeah. Half, yeah, the first half. Way that we we did love each other was uh, was special, and again because you know age that was not our best team talent wise by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a really close knit group. Yeah, I had a quote. I mean, the team that drinks together wins together sounds a lot better than mine. I said, team comes, you get it, a lot closer together around ke a keg than they do kale. Yeah. You know, like as the as the uh, nutritionist came into the world, it was protein shake time. I'm like, all right, I think we should just have a keg, though, just one time right down yonder. I think we'll learn a lot about each other. Back, just very quickly. I think we'll learn a lot about each other right over there. It's a new world, though, Aaron. It's a new world now. You can't do that. It's not healthy. No? You're a big kale guy now, huh? Well, I, what, I smoke kale. Can't wait to the uh, tank tops? You don't need sleeves to kick ass or what? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Aaron. I said this last night, and I'll say it again. Tank top's perfect for you. If you got a little bit of a gut, but you want to do your arms, tank top makes you look good. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks I'm in shape. I'm not. <laughs> I am sloppy, but this tank top makes me feel good. You know, just like just like Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays do. Uh, we're talking yeah. to Aaron Rodgers. Connor, your question, sir? Yeah, Aaron, what was the thought on the post-game sombrero? Because it looked electric, and will you be getting a few more for, you know, Devontae and some of the other guys on the offense? Great question. Uh, every time that we have Monday night, uh, you know, there's ESPN Deportes and John Sutcliffe, who's worked there for a long time, has become a friend of mine. And he's also a tequila supplier for me. So oh, yeah. it's uh, he always brings something silly, you know, with him. And, and we did a post game and he had this sombrero and he wanted me to either wear it or give it to Aaron Jones or something. And I got Devontae to rock it on the way out because I was asking him to wait for me because we were so late. You know, we I was talking with Tim Boyle after the game for a long time and Gmo and and, and Jamal, and by the time I got to Lisa, you know, I was like, man, I want to get in here. And then John was still there, so we did that interview, and he was trying to get me to speak some Spanish, which last time I did, it wasn't very great, so I, it wasn't very good. So I kind of, you know, not, my English isn't very great either, but I, I was trying to keep it to a minimum. Um, but then he brought the sombrero out, then he brought some tequila out, and it was awesome. Hey, are you doing a mustache right now? With I mean, if you go, if you go with that hair, mustache, oh, sombrero. Oh, yeah. Super I Bowl. mean, let's go. We're winning the Super Bowl. I mean, immediately, dude. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. You know, I have a month ish until Halloween, and this has been a year in the making for for my costume. I'm not going to give it away. Wow. But it's somebody who is a hero of mine who has you know long ish hair. 
Scott Stapp, that's awesome. Uh, we're, ta- <laughs> we're talking to Aaron Rodgers here. We're talking to Aaron. Uh, and before we get to the incredible Aaron Rodgers book club that has captivated people that I would have never imagined, and those people would be the people that listen to this show. I had no idea we had readers listening. I am honored to be a part of that. Before we get to that, I would like to ask you, though, you pushed Joe Dirt last night. What if he turns around, okay, and tra- do you remember this? There was a little bit of a, a scrum. You push old buddy. I thought you were potentially going to get like a taunting call out of that thing what happens if he turns around and squares up on you are you throwing hands with joe dirt immediately in the backfield there no i don't think so (laughs) (laughs) that's not a great matchup for me so i like to uh uh you know you know i wouldn't go down uh, easy for sure i I definitely put up a, a solid solid fight but but no i think it's fun sometimes in those moments to, to give a guy a little bit of a shove or something. They don't expect it's you. So a lot of times they'll spin around real quick and they'll see it's you, and then you laugh. It's like bringing some, you know, a little bit of humor to a tense situation. You know, it was like, oh, this guy's pushing me, so I got to push him back. And, I, you know, and there's a lot of fun moments on the field. Like sometimes you kind of give a guy a little bit extra shove and they, you know, whip around real quick and they look at you like, oh, come on, man. And I'm just, and I'm like, come on, man, chill out a little bit. It's just football. That guy yeah. did not turn around, by the way. You pushed him, and he just walked off. You probably saw it on Jumbotron. <laughs> I hate that guy is what he said. And I that's what MCDC wants over there, by the way. He doesn't want any laughing with Aaron Rodgers. Um, I, you know what? I, I told him on the field, you know, I, we ran out. I think it was the first uh, possession in the game. And he was kind of eyeing me or whatever. And so I just kind of, you know, touched my flow a little bit. And you know he did say something. He gave me a nice comment about uh, about my hair. Obviously, he has one of the best you know manes in the entire game. Um, Can we say know, his real name for for God's sake? Something that Clay would be uh, would be really uh, really jealous. Fox. Of. He's the captain of the defense. Fox. What is the guy's name? No Megan Fox. Idea. Detroit I, Lions. Oh man? Jesus! Oh, oh, wow. defense fake fan. Oh, oh, fake fan. Oh, fake fan. God. This guy's the captain of your team. He's that, a good player. He's a good tough. player. He's a very good player. He flies around. That hair comes flying out there. Look like Bobby Carpenter out there. Yeah, he did oh, look a little bit wishes. like old. Is that a Bobby Trump? Yeah, do you know General Bob? You know him pretty well, right? Yeah, he's a great wedding singer. <laughs> I saw him at an event and he grabbed that microphone a lot. I did not hear him sing, but I heard him cut about seven to eight promos that I never thought would come out of somebody's mouth in public. And he and he was forced out there by AJ, obviously, and he just went right up. That guy has zero fear. I absolutely love it. Let's get into the thing that is captivated. You know, people that I don't think would ever think that they'd be captivated in. Maybe they put their reading glasses away for decades, maybe, and you reminding them that reading is a good thing has really gone over well. Where Men Win Glory was last week's book. Pat Tillman's story, behind the scenes tales, and what uh, John Crower was able to do with this book is something that people are always going to be proud of. This guy writes good books, and his story is an amazing one. What should we look forward to for the next week here on the Aaron Rodgers Book Club, Mr. Aaron Rodgers? Before I get into that, I need to ask you, like, where are you getting your cliff notes from? Like, it, it, who is is somebody on the staff? One of the one of the fellas, like, putting Ty. together. I mean, you, you just you didn't actually mention anything that was written in the book, but I know the first week you didn't read The Alchemist. Um, I mean, not the whole thing, not the whole thing. So I'm sure somebody filled in some of the gaps there. You got you know the you know chasing your personal legends, thing, <laughs> which is great, but. Uh, no, let me just say this, uh, since you won't answer my question. Um, I follow Paulo, dude. All right. I, the Alchemist oh, yeah. has changed my life completely. I mean, I, I have the book. Look, page is still marked. I told you this. He ran his fingers slowly <laughs> over the stone. I mean, I've been getting into it. Never read a book. First time Aaron Rodgers Book Club. This is what it's all about. Yeah. This is what it's all about. Yeah. Hell yeah. Connor does read it, though, and does give me a little bit of a heads up. He was not able to finish this book yet, so I wasn't able to give you a bullshit <laughs> thing there, but we will get there eventually, and I think maybe a lot of people are doing that. What's the next book in line here? Thank you, Connor. Before I get into that, I do want to say one of the cool things about this is giving uh, people a glimpse uh, at some of my favorite books and also encouraging people to read it has uh, got the attention of those authors. So, uh, follow the author of the author of the Alchemist. Like, uh, you know, had a bunch of uh, tweets, that, you know, out about it, which is really awesome, I think. And then last week, when I highlight where Men and Glory, which is, you know, just one of uh, a number of amazing books by Krakauer, uh, he reached out to me on social media, which was amazing. I've always been a fan of his work, and so that's like a cool, latent. Uh, you know, benefit of this whole thing, and, and hopefully people are enjoying it. And not look, 
I have a ton of books that I love, but I also have a book stack of about 30 that I want to get to. And it keeps getting added to. Every time I go to Barnes & Noble, I go, oh, I want to read this book. And this goes in a stack that keeps growing and growing and growing. So I'm not like Here reading a book a week. You know, but Jesus. it's like some cool books that I think you can enjoy. So this week's book is an oldie but a goodie. He's One to for a long time was on the uh, <laughs> the reading list for, I believe, uh, either late elementary or junior high. This book still stands up. I don't know why AJ's laughing. This book still stands up. Well, he said something terribly toxic yeah. right in the middle of yeah. your entire thing. He snuck it in so you couldn't hear him, actually. He tried to take down not only the book Let club, him finish, man. the whole Let show. Let him finish. It's a thing. No, it's he's a, a scumbag. Yeah. You are a scumbag. We will kick you out of the Aaron Rodgers book club. What did about. he say? What did he Nothing. say? Nothing. Get him out. I commented on the possible books that you're trying to get to. Yeah. All right. Just go. I want to hear this book. I'm, come on. You're, oh, oh yeah. 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 Go to hell. Oh. Oh. Kick him out. All right. Jeez. Get him out. Let's go two shot. Go two shot. Here. Go to two shot. Good. I'll sit here and watch. Go to two shot. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Mute his mic, too. Smoke Jeez. my cigar without Aaron yelling at me. <laughs> What shirt are you wearing, by the way? What is oh, that? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know who that is. One of the greatest American guitarists ever lived, bud. Okay. So I don't know where I was at. Anyway, this book was on uh, reading list when I was growing up. It still stands up. It's, in my opinion, super relatable to what we're going through as a society now. Uh, when I read it, it had a black cover. They've uh, re-released it with a new cover, but it's... The Giver by Lois. Oh, oh, oh my God! I love this book. All timer. Yeah. This one's good. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic book. Like I said, I read it uh, again probably for the fourth time like a year ago, and it's an easy read. It's like uh, I think it's a little under two hundred pages, but it's a really uh, quick, easy read. Phenomenal book um, about kind of a dystopian uh, uh, society and people that feel a little different, uh, really one person, I guess, in, in, in general, and, and his interaction with the giver, who is a character in the book. So it's a it's an easy read, it's a great book. Again, I usually read nonfiction, but I've now um, highlighted two out of the three, Pat, as you know, fiction, fiction books, but um, The Giver by Lois Lowry, fantastic, uh, fantastic book. That's awesome. I can't thank you enough. Sorry, AJ tried to take down the whole show and the uh, book club, but I can't wait to get back into The Giver. I do believe I had to act like I read that book before, right? Oh, that yeah. is something Definitely. that I've had to act like before, so I'll be able to get refreshed on that, and I will actually read it. Expectation for how long that thing should take me to read, you think? It depends. If you're, if you're doing 30 minutes a night, I think you should be able to read it in a week. Perfect. I just heard there's a movie, too. I won't watch that because the book <laughs> is always better, especially if it's in the Aaron Rodgers book club. Congrats on getting the win. Shout out to the Counting Crows. Mr. Jones is a heater. Can't wait to see what you do this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! What's your fucking problem? we got to get to a break, don't You're we? Yeah. Dirtbag. What is your problem, though, dude? What did I do? Be quiet. What did I do? Oh, you be quiet. You That's do. what you need you to do. You fucking know. We're back. We're back in four minutes, all right? we got to get out of here. I, the show's probably already taken down because old Chuck Berry, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. God. This is unbelievable. I don't know why you guys have this issue with Chuck Berry. I listen to his music. Who cares? Stop. You have never heard a song of his. You've only seen his videos, pal. All right? I and we all I know it. One of the greatest guitarists ever to come out of America. And, you've two never, songs. And, and it's a shame that you've never heard him play the guitar. That is, what you're saying is accurate, and you've never heard the guy play a guitar. Uh, guitar. Right. You've only seen him in his worst already got moments. A, already That's got right. a text. Hey, already got a text. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back in four minutes rounding up this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Maybe some more phone calls on the Five Hour Energy phone line. Big thanks to Aaron. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah. We have to digest some of that here, and we'll see you in four. Cheers. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for 
One main reason, it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. That, that right. and if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. and. Your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. For these guys, it's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. AJ Hawk still here after trying to take the whole show down. We appreciate that. Did you explain to Aaron Rodgers what you said during Aaron Rodgers' book club announcement that could have potentially been alarming? No? Yeah, I told him. I told him. All right. It's despicable. Let's get to the phones. What do we take away from that big thing? He does hear what everybody says about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's about sick of it. Yeah. Last week was a bunch of horse shit and bullshit. Yep. They were questioning his work ethic and whether or not he liked his teammates or cared about his teammates at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he got most upset. Is that what we took from that? I think that big diatribe he did there was beautiful. But is that what we took away well, from wasn't that? that all, wasn't he referencing Jermichael? I think a big think, part of it, yes. I think so. And then he also, the media as well, he started talking about the media as well. I think in the entire state. It was a state of the union almost on sports media, on a sports media show that also shares those beliefs. I don't, I don't want to say it's easy to just be negative and get a lot of buzz, because it's not. Like, you have to think of the negative things. You have to have enough courage to go out and say these negative things about people that you'll potentially run into in public. But it does seem to generate a lot of action whenever you're just absolutely negative. I'm happy to hear, though, that Aaron is like, 
I see it, I hate it, I don't like it, and I'm gonna speak out against it because maybe we can change going forward. Just like a lot of people think with the actual news, right? The actual news is what's the worst thing that happened in yeah. this city today? Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people that are potentially like, is there any way we could potentially change this a little bit and maybe make this a little bit more positive so people don't always think like, oh, being negative is the way to be successful. And I don't know if that's ever gonna change. I think it's been this way for like 50, 60, 70 years at this point. Yeah, well, and it, once like first take and you know, with Skip and um, Stephen A, like, when it first started you know like that once that got birthed then it's like hey people obviously have a very visceral reaction to this one way or the other multiple people started seeing it. it's like oh i could just do this too i don't want to get into a too big of a business discussion here aj but i don't think those people can move products though hmm. so i do think like in the end it does kind of even itself out if that makes sense i don't know if that makes sense or not it might be right i guess i didn't think of it that way but you i mean like are those views matter do those views matter why do people watch NASCAR for the Rex? Why do like, that's just how it is, man. Like if there's a headline, are you going to click on something that says, Hey, man decapitates himself and puts his head back on and then he dies again. Or are you going to do the one that someone says like guy donates $400 to his favorite charity? Me? Which one are you clicking on? $400 in charity because I'm a sound human being. Oh, you yeah. probably are looking for the double decapitation, it sounds like. Did and that happen? part of the problem. Yeah, all right, and Nick, what we don't need you chime in. Us that link. Now is not, and Diggs, we don't need you. <laughs> Listen, on. we don't need the toxicity. This is what you do, all right? We already had enough. Just look at the charity one. I was making a point, though. Being critical or negative, it, it, I think we're all guilty at some point in our life of being like, okay, what's that? Because it is like a... There's a fire where it's negative. You want to see what it is. You don't have to believe it, but unfortunately, a lot of people believe everything they read. I agree. I completely agree. And it, that's why the catchy headline is the thing, because that's really what people see, and that's what captivates them and grabs them and everything like that. Billy has thrown me into a war, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, just because, yeah. I mean, it's he lives in the internet and on YouTube, so literally that's all you see is just, like, ridiculous. And he does an incredible job of, like, I, I have to taper him back a lot. Like, hey, we don't have to do what everybody else does. Okay, let's not do that. And, and it's not like, oh, I'm a hero. Like, But I do believe there should be a little bit more of a pause. Like, people, we should be celebrating life. You know what I mean? Like, I think that should happen. And it seems like in the platform world, negativity hogs publicity. It's always been that way. But, I mean, it has a purpose. It has a point. I mean, me listening to toxic people helps me because I would never view things that way. It's like, oh my God, there's humans out there like, and that's why I'm so thankful that your ass is on here, you know, three days out of nine or whatever, right, yep. yeah. whatever you do. Let's go to the, uh, what's that? I didn't say anything. Yeah, well, Every you won't say anything day. for the next few days either because you're at the Ryder Cup. <laughs> Dirt bag. Right. Right. about work. Right. I mean, Unfortunately, I never, I never thought I was going to commit to any uh, five-day-a-week thing, and this is the only thing I ever would commit to doing five days a week, so I had some prior obligations that were a year or two out on during weekdays. So we're going to eventually get through that. Bullshit. Ryder Cup just happened two days ago. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was an outlier that kind of jumped up. <laughs> yeah, and you have to do that. And you have to yeah. do that, by the way. That is, that is something you have to do. And we're very, we can't wait to hear the stories out of it, by the way. But what I'm saying is it's nice to get other people's viewpoints. I think you have to. And I think that is something a lot of people don't do as well. They just stay in their own lane. Hey, you make me feel good. You tell me exactly what I want to do. I'll mute a lot of people that bury me and block people that will do it. But I still want to know what people who don't think like me think. That is something that I feel like is something um, that I really use on like a daily basis. Like I want to know why people get mad if we talk about what, like I want to know what makes everybody pissed basically. And then I'm like, all right, so if that's gonna piss somebody off and that's gonna piss somebody off, there's no reason for it. Let's just get through this. Let's celebrate this and let's explain why things are going on. I just think getting other people's viewpoints is paramount in our world. And especially because we have the ability to do so, whether you want to or not on the phone, very quickly, you can go find the person who views the opposite of you. And maybe it's nice just to listen to them and say like, okay, I see why you think, I'll never agree with that, but at least I see why you're doing that or Okay, you're a fucking idiot, and that can't that cannot be how everybody thinks. Like yeah. that, I think that's a very big deal. I think, and it's sports, it's real life, it's the world, it's everything. Yeah. Well, and that's the problem is no one does that. Very, very few people. do You have that. to make the effort. Yeah, to exactly. Do it. Think about it. Like, you have to make the effort to go out there and say, okay, why? Okay, I understand. I may completely disagree. Tell me why you believe that, and then you can consume it all and then make up your opinion. And usually, you're like, okay, you're an idiot still but I'm glad you told me why you're an idiot. I've, or like, hey, no, you changed my mind a little bit. I've always been very curious. So like, I enjoy those conversations. Like, I enjoy learning. Like, I enjoy learning. It's huge. You should be curious. Like, they, they knock it out of kids for some reason. My kids ask why 
seven billion times a day and i try to be like hey man keep asking you guys can always ask us questions yeah because you just kind of get fed up with telling them and just tell them to do their own thing but i think it's a big deal i think we could become a much more understanding society community if we understood why people who've been through some things might disagree with our takes you know what i mean yeah. that's just hey we'll try to change it here that's hey right. we'll, that's we'll right. try that's to change right. it here oh, that's yeah. what we'll try to do let's hit the phone call uh five hour energy phone line here let's go to owen in ohio owen what's going on AJ, ho ho! How we doing? Oh, I get a ho H. Great, IO buddy. How you doing? Good man, good. Uh, so, uh, just want to know, uh, how the hell did you get nine interceptions with those beat up, broken hands of yours? <laughs> I love that. You're a great athlete. You actually have one with a cast on, don't you? Didn't you have a cast on one? You f fucking stuff. Yeah, for my last like five years. Yeah. Absolute Jesus. hero. Let's go to Drew in Phoenix on a five hour energy phone line. What's going on, Drew? Hey, what's going on, boys? Thanks for the taking the call. Um, appreciate you guys doing the show too. Just a quick question: like to ask people at bars, get the conversation and debate going. Um, you got an absolute freak athlete, DK Metcalf, you know Tyreek Hill, mixed with Giannis, LeBron, etc. Uh, if you just dropped them onto this planet, what uh, sport do you think would be easiest for them or hardest for them to get into? Great question, Drew. Uh, this is my my nightmare is to have to have this argument with somebody in a bar. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving the I bar. I don't want to be rude. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually closing out. Sorry. Sorry. And this might be why I don't go to bars much anymore, yeah. to be honest this with you. This doesn't happen. But Good I, question. No, this guy, I don't want to downgrade the caller. Good question. But for me, at least, my for me, that's just not my, my strength. Yeah, me neither. I couldn't even guess because it depends. Can the person throw well? Can they catch well? Can they run good? Yeah, there's a great athlete. It's like, do they have DK Metcalf's running ability or do they have his throwing ability? Like, what? A, I mean, that's a, that's probably why it's such a good conversation to start. Drew wanted to make the show better. Hey, mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Thank you, Drew. Drew. I don't know if that was his name. Bocce. No, I think it was Drew. Drew, I, I appreciate that call. I think it was but, Bocce. But that is why. That's like the, um, you know, fuck, Mary kill had a run there for a bit. Oh, it's yeah. Like, All right, yeah. I'm out. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, like, Good would run. you rather? Yeah. All right, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I don't do this. And then these types of things come into conversation. I'm terrible at them. I think that's why I don't do them. But also, like, that's all fugace. But you're good at them. You already said, like, can you? How do they throw? How do they, like, you already dove right into it. I'm not good at them because of what I just gave. Like, I just gave them no answer because I have so many questions because I'm curious, which leads us right back to where we were don't That's be scared right. to ask questions don't be scared to learn why people who don't agree with you don't agree with you this is a good time to think about ourselves especially on this beautiful aaron Rodgers tuesday hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, pms after hours on the other side of this break and chris mad dog hey, hey, on serious cheers that really snuck up on me there Duh. that time yeah i mean we can't you still got it. we can't like you know fix life in the world and also have a hard out. That's difficult. No, yeah. <laughs> you also blink and it's been three hours. It's like, holy shit. These, this is so much better than the off season, isn't oh, it? Oh, oh my God. God. Goodness. Yeah, I'd say. Isn't it nice to have football? It's nice to have Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have football. It's nice to wake up and be like, okay, today might be a good day. Yeah, like, yeah. Today might be a good show, you know? It's even nicer for AJ. Probably knows, well, it's because he gets to go hang out at the Ryder Cup. But yeah. I, there's some of those off season nights where I'll wake up uh, for my early morning piss, whenever it is, 4 or 5 a.m., and I'll get back into bed, and I lay down, and I'm just like, what am I talking about today? Oh, and Jesus. it's like, and then I get on my phone at 4 a.m., and then it's just all the way up. I don't think people understand. I, I am very relaxed and calm, but there are a lot of conversations that happen with me in the morning, like, oh, this show's going to fucking stink today. And then all of a sudden, we get through it somehow. But when football season's around, <sighs> Man, this thing is a rocket yeah. ship, AJ. It is so much fun. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, I mean, that just shows you, like, football, king. at least for the people that we're around, football is king. Like, I know there's plenty of people that don't feel that way, but the majority, the mass, at least in America, seems to, to tune in and love everything about football. Yeah, I mean, ratings don't lie. Or hate it all. Or maybe they hate it and they just hate watching. There's plenty of that, too. Do you sure. see this lady that hated me last night? I love her. And oh. Killian. What'd she do? She tweeted out, uh, okay, this douche is making me change. <laughs> well, how do you know she's talking about you? She, didn't she was. I mean, the timing added up. And like then 10 50. Had, yeah, she had follow ups too. She's like, he's still on. I love, I've never met this lady ever in my life, but these she's are things that I like to find in my life. Like, this is, oh, yeah. I enjoy this. And I think I do seek out other people's opinion. I laugh so hard. This lady is awesome, AJ. Yeah, I mean, you should. Like, it, it can't all be, like, everybody can't say this is the best. Like, I love it. Like, then, then what are you that. doing? 
There's been too much of that lately. People well, have been way too nice. I, it's, mean, I think it's because everything else is, you know, so much different than what we do. So yeah. people have been very nice, and I appreciate everybody. But last night, everybody was way too nice. And I'm not just talking about the people on the internet, but I'm talking like, you know, people that maybe weren't as nice in the past, sending like, hey, thank you, sorry, all that type of stuff, you know. And so I was like, I got to go on the internet and find somebody that hated me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I find Ann Killian. And this guy's a douche. I'm like, still got it. Thank right, you, man. Ann. Right, thank, thank you, you Ann. Ann. Still got it. I appreciate that. that there was no comparison last night, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you got Favre and Peyton just, hey, 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 hey. they did that for 85% of the time. Did Favre, Favre, on there. Did Favre like get, just, just get done playing 72 holes on the face of the sun? <laughs> what? Farf, did what? you you didn't see his tan line? Yeah, he's pretty burnt. The guy's bad. throwing the ball around, probably. You know what I mean, you're saying he's, golfing. He's probably hucking the pigskin around. It also took him two and a half hours to figure out how to make a phone call. <laughs> Peyton said it multiple times. Like Jesus, <laughs> Brett was supposed to come on in the first quarter. I don't know what the hell's going on. So everybody was tweeting like, "Am I going to get bumped?" You know, everybody thought my time was potentially going to get bumped when Brett and finally got back on in the third quarter when he said he was putting two. Cups together, I think you said, is how he connected. <laughs> Which, by the way, it's amazing that that worked. The string with the cup. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Did it? What do you mean? I did mean, it really I work? Think, yeah, I think that was one of those urban before. legends that it never worked. It works. <laughs> yeah, if the string's 10 feet long and you can just hear the person, exactly. Yeah, it works. <laughs> All right, well. I do not. I never thought about it. You know, since what? it has happened in my life, which is what when you're five or six years yep, old. Exactly. That's why it, it gets away because you can just say you can hear him, and then you just make shit up, and you're talking back. But really, the cup with the strings, <laughs> and you, absolute scam. And then you say the energy is going through there. Yes. And you kind of the waves. It's a kind of how you explain everything. Yes. So many cups and so many strings were sold because wait, wait, of wait, that wait. myth. This guy will believe any conspiracy theory on the internet, but the cup that's with different. the strings was too much for that, him to that, handle. That's different. There are a lot and of strings the, tying those conspiracies you together. You know that. Industry Nick. was making a billion dollars off of this. Big Cop was making a bunch of money off. We this. need more cops. He sold soup for years because of this. <laughs> You're an idiot. Think about it. Anyways, <laughs> I thought I was going to get bumped. Patrick Willis did not get a lot of time on there. Yeah, yeah he was a quick guest. I love Patrick Willis too. Like I was yoked. He, he is yoked still. But yeah, they were talking about like, yeah, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk some Tennessee Ole Miss when we come back. <laughs> They're just like, hey, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll see you later, Patrick. Have a good one. The guests, I, the way the internet was reacting was like, hey, the worst time on this show is when guests come on. And I saw that. Obviously, I'm reading that. And I'm watching that. And I agree, too. It's not like the worst. It's not the guest's fault. There's, it's because of the, the delay and the uh, stepping on each other. It's just hard to do, especially when they, they're thrown into it right there. All also, right. It's just you great. Done that. Also, it's great when, you just, when it's just Peyton talking football. Yes. Yeah. It's like no matter what happens, like they had a couple questions, I guess, set up for me. I saw that whenever they zoomed in on the Red Solo <laughs> yeah, Cup. Yeah. And I almost texted Peyton like, hey, do not ask me any questions. Like, let's just get right into it. But I didn't want to throw any more into it. And we kind of did, I guess. But a yeah. couple questions. They had that video. They asked me for the uh, video of me kicking the 70 and 75-yard field goals there with the Coles kicking out of Whitewater, Wisconsin, after a couple, you know, pops the night before or two. What? And uh, I was like, ah. I guess I want to see Peyton talk football. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a fascinating thing. Don't figure it out. I love it, though. I feel like I learned so much football there. Are you learning stuff as well, or do you know all this shit? Yeah, already? no, of course. Everyone learned something, I think, watching them just talk about it and seeing how they think through a game. And, like, Peyton, you see how passionate Peyton is. And I love Eli's little, he has little comments when they're going off the air. Those are my favorite. Like, I know Eli has so much more material he wants to use, but he can't really on ESPN, I think. Eli's. Eli's doing a little bit of this, I think. Yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. just a little bit of this. With He'll get Peyton. more and more comfortable doing it, too. And it's usually always going back at Peyton, which is what makes it fun. Yeah, it's an off-air conversation that he and Peyton have had a lot that he is bringing on, which is what, you know, you do. Right. And I think, oh, uh, you know, this show is, is this almost one of our specialties, actually. Uh -huh. is you got to be. Off-air conversations that you just kind of awkwardly throw. <laughs> yeah. Hey, remember this? Hey, remember, what are, you, <laughs> what are your thoughts on, boom? You know what I mean? Like, that just pops up out of nowhere. So I, th I think it's only going to get better and better, and I hope 
you know, I hope they do figure out the guest thing because I think it can add. Like when Ray Lewis was on there and when Russell was on there, there were some moments that were like incredible. You yeah. know, you saw some of the things, but then the tech in the end inevitably will get you. But that's how it is anyways. Like that's just life. So could, I'm, th I'm thankful they let me in there. Could you hear the game audio mix at all or no? Because it seemed like they did the same thing a couple times. Like when you were on there, like you could hear the game still in like the background and like it was pretty loud and it was like it's just jarring trying to like listen to that and balance it with the conversation that you guys are having on the side so when I, when I was on I do not recall but I do remember watching the first couple quarters and Peyton was saying something I could barely hear him because right the crowd and the ref was talking over here and I think ESPN and whoever's producing it great people but they were very nice to me I just went through the entire process very very nice to me so I'm appreciative of that I think they're trying to find a balance of like hey fans are back in the yeah in the stadium oh. the that like I think they're trying to find that balance you know so maybe they should work it a little bit though like hey whenever gotta you know, ride the levels man Zeke knows about that hell yeah Nick hell now yeah. I mean Nick's riding the levels yeah. over yeah. there ride it baby He's doing it. you were also perfect for the fourth quarter too because it was a blowout game and like the only people who were either still watching were fans of the teams or degenerate Us. gamblers who yeah. you know watch or talk about football so it was like perfect for you to be on there especially the way it ended too. Peyton knows a lot more about gambling then <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like he, yeah, you could tell. He tries to say fantasy. He was like, "Oh, it's big for your fantasy or whatever." But as soon as they saw me start to sweat, they were loving it. They were yeah. Like, yeah, the replay. Oh my god, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, they knew. Hey, how does how does Greasy and Lewis feel oh, about geez. this? I don't know, honestly, and Levy too. I mean, Levy has been around yeah. ESPN forever, you know. And the pinnacle is that Monday Night Football booth, and they're all good guys. I, actually, I've never met any of them but Steve Levy, I guess, but. From what I've heard, they're all good guys. I guess at one point, too, at the bottom, they had a main yeah. thing on yeah. ESPN. Yep. Then the internet, I don't know if the internet interneted this or not, but I did see one photo that on the uh, on the main broadcast on ESPN, it said main broadcast on ESPN, <laughs> too, as opposed to Manning broadcast on ESPN, mm. too. And I think that was something that maybe Levy and the boys could be pissed off about over there. You know what I mean? That is something like, hey, I understand we're trying to get as many as possible here, but... That's the only thing. Other than that, I don't know. It's it's fascinating because I think they know, they understand. Like it's Peyton Manning. It's the Manning. You know what I mean? It's the Manning brothers, it's the Manning family. Like that's that's just gonna be some. But it's also an alternative, you know. So if somebody doesn't like their calling, fucking go somewhere else then. And you know? I also saw Levy before the game yesterday. It might have been at like six o'clock or so. He's promoting the Manning cast. Like, hey, just a heads up. Like it the, also available on ESPN too. Like which I thought was kind of weird. So they must not care that much. But I also thought it was interesting on my or they ex make him. on my Xfinity wow. remote. Yeah, potentially. But uh, on my Xfinity remote, I'd say like ESPN. It went to ESPN too. For it like does that main. on my, every time. It does that though. Okay, so that's just an Xfinity yes. bug and not them actually trying yes. to get you to watch the Manning cast instead of the regular Monday Night Football. If you said Monday Night Football and it went to ESPN too, that would be something. But anytime I say ESPN into my fucking thing that rarely listens, it's like my dog Chuck or whatever. It'll go to ESPN too. They need to time. change that. That was too. driving me fucking nuts. Yeah, me too. I mean, luckily I was trying to go to ESPN too, so it kind of worked out. But <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> All right. Hey, good luck at the Ryder Cup, dude. Go get him, AJ. Go get him. Thank you. I'll, I'll see if I can check in maybe uh, over the next couple of days. Can we go back to that point? I bet you Levy and them love it because all the people that were bitching at them potentially for anything. Exactly. It's uh, like, hey, nope. you got to get the hell out you of think here. That stops them? You think that stops people from bitching at them? Yeah. No, dude, you just got to mute. It's, it's probably the same group of humans. You know, I feel yeah, I mean, like don't, they shouldn't worry about it, whatever. Like they shouldn't worry about it. But I don't think having any alternate broadcast like, OK, I'm not going to go kill these guys online like I did before. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right? People that They're are doing probably that pounding like the that. Manning drum That's now. Like you guys should see ESPN2 is so much better than you. But I mean, at the same time, they probably don't give a shit. I saw some people I saw some people tweeting like to other people about me coming on, you know, and I was like, oh, I feel bad being a part of that. Like, I feel bad. <laughs> that people are burying people, you know, in the name of me. Like, I appreciate the support, but also, like, I mean, I think all these people read everything that's said to them. You know what I mean? Like, I think everybody yeah. reads everything that's sent to them. So these trolls that are just trolling or whatever, there's a human behind there, you know? And I've gotten into it with a couple of troll accounts, fake accounts. Like, hey, I know there's a human behind there, and I'm going to try to get to the soul of that human. Like, <laughs> I, I'm going to try to take... You try, what you're trying to do with me, like, this is a good game. We're verbal jousting here. We're doing this whole thing. But I think a lot of these people read all this stuff. And I, I, I hate, it's like, it's that negativity thing. Like, 
I think we should enjoy things more. Yeah. Like, I, I just think we should enjoy stuff more. And if you don't enjoy it, just turn it off. Just turn it off and go somewhere else. Look, so there's so many options now, but I guess a lot of people do hate watching, and that then leads to hilarious hate tweeting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, get a good pop from a couple of the friends, and it's good like, memes. All right, all right, yeah, pretty yeah. good, pretty good, pretty good. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just one thing leads to another, and it's the world we live in. We'll all get used to it. Aaron Andrews, it seems like, seems like she, you know, by the way, she crushed on this particular yeah. show. Oh, yeah. She also buried AJ. What, the fake cigar thing she yeah, said? Fake yeah, fake background. background. Oh. Fake background, yeah. She did say Oh, so that. she's seen me on the show. Tell her thank you for watching. She we actually did, did say yeah. she watches a lot of the show. But then when it, the Aaron Rodgers exclusive thing came out, yeah. and then I guess a lot of people on the internet were telling her, well, it's not an exclusive because, you know, Aaron goes on to this show every two. And I did not hear any of this, by the way. It legitimately did not see any of this. And she like kind of was like, I know, I get it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I hate that we potentially... You know, Aaron Andrews probably had a little bit of angst against us for this entire thing. He's like, yo, I didn't even read that at all, by the way. I, I didn't see any of it. And your interview was great. Yeah. It was great. What it was is great. She, what's she going to say? Yeah, you know what? I won't do an interview with Aaron Rodgers before the opening kickoff of the NFL season because he's on, you know, this show. Yeah. It's like, give it like, what, what do you want from her? What and she did, she did answer probably like five to six tweets that came at her that said it's not an exclusive. She was like, I didn't call it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, this is not my... <laughs> And I appreciate her doing that and letting it out. And I like what Aaron did today. You know, I don't necessarily love everything you did today, yeah. but we'll get Screw better. That. We'll see you, what, next Monday? Or when, when are you coming back? Thursday. No, I'm, I'm coming back early. Uh, I'll be back Friday morning, so I'll be on the show Friday. Okay, Friday's show will probably go 11 to 2, if I had to guess, because i got to fly to Philadelphia. Okay. So when you'll be, like, noonish, you think you'll be back on Friday? Yeah, or no? I can be back for, for noon for sure. Are we going to hear any stories? You're going to be tight-lipped over there. Probably super tight-lipped. Is that all about for America? Or? I mean, we'll have to see what happens. I can't make anything up. Like, I'll, I'll document my experience to you. I'll let you know how it went. And hey, make sure it's not like when you were at Augusta, when you were just drunk wobbling around all by your goddamn yeah. self, yeah. not yeah. saying hello to anybody. <laughs> have, they released the, have they released the pairings yet? Do you know? Like, are you playing with Daniel Craig? Are you playing with James Bond? Roy Ooh. Kent? Is Roy Kent playing? Yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if they're in it. Uh, no, they haven't said who. I don't know who's on my team or the other team. Oh, surprise. You don't know anybody on your team? Be curious. Uh, Kelly Slater, he mentioned. They mentioned to me. I think Kelly played in two, 2018. I think he's doing. It's a it. surfer, right? Oh yeah, wow. best ever. Scratch Kelly. golfer too. Played at Tahoe. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's good. Pretty good. Is fucking Madonna playing? Ooh, has to. Mike. Mike is. Uh, I don't know. How like about said, Marty? How about I Marty? I watch his doc. I watch Marty's doc. By the way, Marty Fish. Yeah, Marty's did, awesome. Marty won talk like Marty is a great dude. I watched Doc too on the plane. He, he's awesome. I did not know he and Andy Roddick like literally grew up in the same house together and yeah. everything like that. Like he was actually created for competition for Andy Roddick, and then like it, it became an entire thing. And then there was one tournament I think Charlotte. Nah, I don't know. There was one tournament where Andy beat him, and then Andy Roddick went on to superstar him, and Marty just kind of became like the aside from guy. And it was a great documentary. I didn't, I knew nothing about the guy aside from him winning Tahoe. And on the 18th hole, he had a chance to lay up or go for an eagle, and the green seemed to be like this wide, and he was like 200 some out, and he attacked it went like eight feet or whatever. I was like, oh, I love this guy. The documentary was incredible on Marty. Fisher. Yeah, them also like laying out how wild those guys were coming up and trying to like carry the torch. Like Djokovic came in and Nadal came in and kind of changed the whole game for him. Because even they even buried Andy Roddick a little bit for a little, even though he was kind of the premier guy for the U.S. Yeah, because America was supposed to continue to carry on its tennis dominance. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, the couple, you know, just at the same exact time, <laughs> the two greatest tennis players of all time yeah. showed up. Yeah. And it's like Andy Roddick had no shot. Marty had no chance. It was that was a great documentary. I, I didn't know him at all, aside from the Tahoe stuff. You guys are like friends with him, right, out there? I mean, I get to, to talk to him every time I'm out there. And he's he's great. I never knew any of this stuff, like the anxiety and all of that. He was he uh, he documents very well throughout. They got a lot of footage, too, growing up and living with Roddick. Like, mm -hmm. all of it's it's really good. But... I uh, he's like you would love him. Fun dude, always seems to be having a great time, and obviously a very good golfer. Very good golfer, and uh, don't forget to read the Giver. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So watch that doc. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, it's just it's one of the untolds. Yeah, it's yeah. it's in there. Be great, great to series. chat with him on the show, AJ. Marty, yeah. If he's playing, yeah. if he's playing yeah. in this thing, we'd love to chit chat with him. You know, maybe ask him like in between your, I don't know, ninth and tenth shot on the first hole. Yeah, mm -hmm. good, that's I mean, a good point. You're probably right. Believe me, it's a tough course out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. A lot of yardage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, first thing I said to the dude, I'm like, hey, dude, 
did you think I was good at golf? He's like, oh, I've seen you. You're, you're good enough. I'm like, okay. He said, we'll pair you with somebody good. Hey, listen, pal, I'm not going to make you regret this decision before I even get there, but if you hey, think I that out, I'm good. I look, they got grandstands, gigantic grandstands yeah. built everywhere. And we're, it's only a nine-hole scramble thing, but I don't know how many fans will be there on Thursday, the day that I'm doing my competitive day. I'm like, a lot. Hopefully Thursday, what time? Though. <laughs> wearing helmets. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> uh, if you go and see this, I think we have some people that listen to this in Wisconsin. Uh, and obviously, if you can get some shots of A.J. Hawk uh, playing golf, we will use mm -hmm. it on the show. Yeah. So yeah. if you're going to this thing, get a good okay. angle on these mangled fingers playing terrible golf. Get some shots. We would love to be able to give a little update on beautiful Thursday night football Thursday. You know what I mean? Great. Can't wait. That'd be great. We'd appreciate it. Uh, AJ, safe travels. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for trying to take down the show today. No problem, man. Had a, had a fun show, guys. Have a great couple shows in the next couple days, and I'll uh, I'll try to check in. Hey, Enjoy your vacation. Hey, part-time yeah, AJ. Come yeah. back on Friday. Damn. Can't wait to see you on Friday, AJ. Con. Uh, from all of us, all of you, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and do a giveaway because today was a rather large day, I think. I didn't look at the numbers. I assume it did good. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know why you do, but I'm very thankful for it. Uh, almost 50,000 watching today. Sheesh. Let's cool. go. That's so big. Sheesh. That's so cool. That makes no sense. That's a massive fucking stadium. And obviously, you guys are coming for Aaron Rodgers and people come for everybody else. But I want to let you know, we are eternally grateful. Right now, use the hashtag ARBookClub. And... Uh, um, also put uh, put what you think AJ Hawk is going to score on Thursday. Yeah, nice. hell yeah, scramble, two man scramble. All right, he's going to be with Marty Fish, probably yep. best golfer we mm. got. That isn't a professional golfer. Who knows who that's going to be? Use hashtag AR Book Club. It's a two man scramble. He's representing America. Predict what their final score will be after nine holes. Yeah, I think it's only nine. I think we skip around the course too. You don't just play the front or back. Okay, so what is what is what do you what do we guess is a standard score here? Just so people uh, thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. Thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah, around even. Okay, around even. You guys playing for the tips? A four man scramble, two man. I mean, hey, we could easily both be out of bounds off the tee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So Something hashtag AR book or PMS AR. I'll be out of bounds a lot into the lake a lot. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah, okay. Hashtag 55. PMS AR book club. Predict what he and his partner that we do not know yet will score in the nine man scramble on Thursday. We'll give away 10 $1,000 gifts. Wow. So if you get it right, you know, we'll pick 10 random in there. Let's go. We can't thank you enough for joining us. This has been fucking really cool. Hashtag PMS AR book club. Guess what AJ Hawk's going to score with somebody? You could potentially win one of the 10 thousand dollar giveaways we can't thank you enough hammer downs in 15 minutes probably 3 30 mm -hmm. at youtube.com forward slash hammer down let's have a great tuesday <laughs> cheers everybody